favorite podcast is to dits and tits. I put up my tits to get down with this. My favorite podcast, to dits and tits. We fight and then we celebrate with tits. What's up? You're on with another episode of Jits and Tits. Damn! The Jits and Tits podcast is brought to you by Brandon Remy of Remy Fit, the premier online training outlet for combat sports athletes, focusing on the four pillars of performance, movement, mindset, sleep, and nutrition. Check out Brandon at RemyFit.com and be Remy Fit on Instagram. We're also brought to you by Island Kava, Long Island's first and only kava bar, serving exotic teas and relaxing elixirs that'll help you recover and wind down after an intense training session. Island Cove is located right in the heart of Patchog. We are also sponsored by Total Motion 360. This new at-home fitness product combines both functional training and traditional training methods, taking it to new levels never seen before. Total Motion 360 combines landmine training and mixes movements from yoga, Pilates, and Tai Chi, creating fun total body workouts to promote balance, mobility, and strength. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Total Motion 360. And visit their website, TotalMotion360.com. We're also brought to you by Relax and Revive, which is a total mind and body optimization and rejuvenation space. When you need to feel recharged and ready to go, book an appointment or walk in and give yourself a well-deserved break. They offer access to infrared saunas, lay compression therapies, full body LED recovery bed, cold plunge, and professional massage therapy. They also have a private room that has an infrared sauna and cold plunge in the same room to try out their contrast therapy. The Jits and Tits podcast is also brought to you by Lalo. Lalo is a carbonated kava drink inspired by the culture of the south coast of the Fiji Islands, where locals have been cultivating and enjoying kava for generations. Their ingredients are sourced straight from the South Pacific, staying true to their island roots. Inspired by their island lifestyle, Lalo is looking to counterbalance the caffeinated work hard, play hard culture of our time. You can find Lalo at Island Kava, Long Island's major distributor of this relaxing island inspired drink. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What's up, yo, fellas? Yo. Early morning special today, boys. <sighs> yeah, so yeah, very early. Fuck we got, we got selfish Remy. Selfish fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you we, know. We got Remy today competing at Sogi. Yep. Remy Couple won, hours. Remy wanted to keep the routine the same. Yeah, I so. don't like switching my days up. I don't like making competition days like more important than any other day. Like to me, it's just another day, and I just gotta, I just gotta compete on it. Go to work. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I thought mean, about Saturday, but then we wouldn't have been able to train yesterday. We all trained yesterday. Yeah, no, no, uh, it's good to keep it on Sundays anyway. Yeah. It's something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. The, the the podcast makes me actually like Sunday. Otherwise, Sunday's like fuck. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> you know? I look forward to recording every Sunday. Me too. So you got any more people in your bracket, Rem? Um, well, they still have me at 155, but I'm not <laughs> definitely oh, doing damn, that. Oh, damn, dude. Um, so, dude. yeah, um, I think there's eight or nine people dude, in my dude, bracket. Right, Last time I looked at 170. Nice. But <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Nice. What, what flavor Lalo is that, dude? It's a Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Celsius flavored Lalo. No, no, that's a Blackberry... Play though, I thought. No, no, that one's right here. Yeah, no. I, you missed what I'm doing there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> try to throw it in, try to throw it in. We don't support outside drinks here, bro. Yeah, dude. so you, you I mean, working, I'm not I'm the one drinking on, it. I'm working on a sponsorship, guys. <laughs> nice, dude. We're getting there. I've been sucking these things down. <laughs> they work? They do. You go dude, suck really somebody in the company you down. You gotta be go suck someone off. You yeah. can't be sucking those things down. Dude, there's still like uh If you're an executive at Celsius, we got a guy for you. <laughs> I'd rather, like I'd rather suck he, those things down than suck somebody off. Though. I'm saying he's trying to suck somebody but down he's trying to get some to, cash out of yeah. him. Yo, this, this guy used to not have teeth. You know it's good. Dude, I said I was sucking them down, not someone down. I know, that's wrong. I know. Yeah, I know. I'm we're, saying we're it for telling you. you to do that. <laughs> no we're telling that. you if you want to like speed up the sponsorship. Yeah. Yo, I have a hood on like in between my headphones and my ears and it sounds weird as fuck. Right? <laughs> I, yo, I have my my uh, my hat on and it sounds so Yo, I got weird. a hand warmer. <laughs> it's like echoey. I, was, I thought I saw a hand warmer on the yeah. table. I was like, what the fuck is that? They were, on the, they were on the counter at 7-Eleven this morning. I was like, yep. <laughs> I mean, it was fucking cold today. It's like 14 degrees out yeah. there. Is yeah. it? It's cold. Brick. Yeah. I just came here in a t-shirt, bro. Seriously? Yeah. The fuck Walked. wrong with you? Walked. <laughs> I'm built different with no shoes on, dude. I ain't afraid yeah. no cold. My yeah, nephew. Good for you. I'll, my nephew I'm said gonna, it to me the other day. I'm built different. I was like, yeah, you're built like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, you are built different, <laughs> yeah. dude. Your parts, He's like, come on, Uncle Dave. You know, like your parts are cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Aftermarket>. <laughs> Fucking made in Pakistan. <laughs> you're definitely built different. 
Dude, some of the nicest geese are made in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are geese. The tiger geese. Those aren't people. <laughs> the, the, the tiger geese is taking the world by storm. Dude, it is. It's a nice geese, man. It has all that tiger padding down by the crotch. What the fuck are you guys talking yeah, about? Yeah, that was wild. Was that? I got a gee, I got a gee from A and P recent drop, and uh, Taylor actually got it for me, and it was pretty funny. We were doing like little like fucking back rolls, and Cat's like, she's like, "Oh, is there tiger print in your crotch?" I was like, <laughs> "I guess so." I didn't even know you staring at my crotch, kid. <laughs> 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 So is there actually tiger print in your crotch? Yeah. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Oh, so it's actually an astute observation. How much did you pay for that gig? Taylor paid money for it. Okay. How much did she pay for that gig? Probably like two fifty. Good money. She give you a Celsius with it? No. But I was hyped that she got it for me. (laughs) Dude, they sold. They sold out in like less than five minutes, and I was at work, so I wasn't going to be able to get it. No. She hooked you up, dude. Yo, actually, speaking of geese, yo, you're. You said you got that Origin gee, right? So last night I'm on Instagram, and Origin popped up as like a sponsored ad. They also make, uh, like, you know the Indian clubs that I use? Like, the small little, like, tiny mace things? Yeah. They make those, like, handmade, like, wooden ones that um, they, like, uh, like the weights, like, screw in so you can adjust the weight. It's pretty sick. I never, yeah, they I never make a lot of good shit. They make a lot of shit. Yeah, they make boots now. They make jeans, yeah. too. Really? Yeah. 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 They started oh, out They actually the manufacture company, bad luck, they? apparently, too, because I put that gi on and broke my rib the first time I put it on. So, <laughs> no, so that should, was shout out to Origin. Sounds, <laughs> that like that was Tommy D was just mad at you for passing him or whatever the fuck <laughs> happened that day. <laughs> yeah. So I should not get them is what you're saying? No, no, I'm just kidding. Origin, Origin's legit, man. Speaking of gis, I remember... Gis are for gis? Years ago. Oh, yeah, that, too. Shoya Roll, when Shoya Roll first like came around, they dropped the um, the Americana gi, and uh, oh, there's another one, it's like a white and brown gi, me and Burns were hyped for them. Dude, I was upstate, I went and found internet on my phone like to, to order these gis, it was like 160, 70 bucks for the Americana gi, it was so sick, it was blue, like you know. That's still not bad though. No, no. 160 bucks? I mean, but you're talking like eight, nine years ago. <laughs> You still get you get keys like that today though. So yeah, it's not yeah. too bad. I mean show your roll is probably like double the price. Yeah. Now. Yeah, sure it's probably like two twenty now. Yeah. yeah so you've got to figure adjust for inflation, you know. This is like two thousand twelve. So I, I find the internet, I order this key, I'm mad hype. It didn't ship for three more months. Oh, right? It was a pre-order? It was a pre-order, and oh, it didn't okay. ship for like three months. That's the worst. I finally ended up getting it, dude. <laughs> I wore it for, I think I had it for like three months before the fucking pants ripped on. Oh, it. ripped on Dude, I was so worst. fucking mad about it. That's that's that sucks. sucks. I'm still tight about it back. fucking 10 years later. It was, is it, that, it is was that nice why you though? never put a gear oh, on Oh, it was again? such a sick gear. What? Is Did the pants rip and you were like, fuck this, I'll never put a gi on again. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah, that kind of started to slide. This is the last day. <laughs> yeah. was, was that the fucking origin yeah, of why you... Yeah, that's his villain origin story. <laughs> yeah, like basically my my kimono turned into fucking shorts, so I was like, I guess I'm just doing no gi now. You just do, <laughs> just do what Brunetti does, just wear the fucking pants cut off like they're shorts. I, I did. I love that, dude. Dude, I have the pair of the no gi shorts. I mean, uh, gi shorts. Yeah. Fucking amazing! Yep. I love them. I have gi pants too, like yep. like regular everyday pants with pockets and shit. The shorts are great. Fucking amazing! Yeah, they are honestly the two most comfortable pairs of pants I own. Dude, it's like I got great ideas. I just don't act on it fast enough. Yeah, we said this. Yeah, right? Nick had that idea back in the day because we used to we used to run into Paul Rodriguez, who was the instructor at Red Boy. We'd see him in like. Shop right and key pants and shit, and be like, "What is going on?" And then Nick's like, "Yo, it wouldn't be a bad idea though. Think about them in shorts; they're mad comfortable." Yep. <laughs> this was like, and then here we are, dude. Yeah. yeah, you had that idea. I gotta tell you, you got. I think the first time you mentioned that idea, we were at uh, Wildwood for the Nagas. We might have been. I think that's where it first came up. Me, you, Hugh. And Galvez, I think. Good Hugh McKenna, dude. Well, you didn't fucking do anything about Kicking it. Kicking rocks no. down the boardwalk and no. shit. I didn't. I should have I should have acted, dude. Yeah, bro. I should have fucking acted. I still got my first key. My very first key, yeah. I'm trying to think what my first, first key was. Because, like... I mean, it was, I, it was only three years ago, dude. Like I know, but when, I, but when I started, ago, my brother... <laughs> you're a cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, when I started... Yeah, you got underwear I got, older than that, bro. I, I, I do. <laughs> talking about your geek. <laughs> no, but when I started, my brother switched gyms to breathe, so he gave me mad shit. Like, oh, that's awesome. You know, well, I bought some of it, but... I still, you got the hookup, yeah. bro. No, it was nice. It you was, got to try was, the shit on. You're like, nah, I don't want to buy this. I'll, <laughs> I'll buy that. Nah, this don't fit right. Yeah. 
That's the worst part about buying a gi online, man. Yeah. It's like every gi company has it fits like fits di- different. Yeah, they're all different sizing. Yeah, I like, wish they had like a fucking standard fucking size. Yeah. And they have size charts, but the size charts don't really re- reflect it. No, because they all use the same goddamn size chart. Yeah. It doesn't fucking make any <laughs> sense. The, the only one that I think I'm going to like buy because I already have one from them is the War Tribe. And they have like, because a lot of times like they have like A1, A2. They mm-hmm. don't have anything in between. A1H? A1L? Yeah, that's that's what I found on War Tribe. War Tribe has A1H. So it's Aren't like, a lot of geek companies doing that? It's like. It's for like a huskier guy. It sounds like Corona. It does. A1H? A- Do you have your A1H Corona, vaccine? A1H. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you guys boosted on your A1H and A1Ls? Dude, did you see what stock sent us? No. That thing of like uh, vaccine 99%. Uh, it's like. Dun, 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 And the music gets faster. You know that song? It's like a classical yep. music song. So it says like, you know, <laughs> vaccine's 99% effective, 98% effective. And it keeps going down. And then it goes all the way down to like 30% effective. And then it's like, <laughs> booster, booster. It's all, <laughs> it's, it's all headlines. That's awesome. Dude, it was like the best video I've fucking seen. Like in term in terms of like COVID, it's so funny because I'm watching. I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm like, how low are these numbers gonna go? And it gets into like the fucking thirties, and I'm like, holy shit! And it's like boosted, boosted, boosted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they can't keep up, dude. They can't that keep up with the memes. Yo, the memes are funny. Internet is ruthless, dude. Yeah, dude. Speaking of ruthlessness on the internet, these motherfuckers are going after the goat, bro. J R E going after Joe Rogan, hard core hard body, baby. And it makes me. It makes me sad, legitimately sad to see because, dude, Rogan's been on the air for mad long. Saying the dumbest fucking shit. The dumbest shit. There's over like 6,000 hours of shit to go back and listen to this guy. And throughout all the time he's been on, he's dodged controversies. And he's even like, he's had guests come on and be like, oh, you you know, the the media's saying this about you. He's like, I don't care. I just don't respond. To see him responding now. Makes me feel like he's on the verge of getting canceled, and no, it's like no, yeah. you got no, you got to look at it like you can't Rogan. cancel him. No, well, not that, but you got to look at it like this. Joe Rogan, you know, he looks like an idiot, right? But he's really not, and he's just adapting to the times. Back in the day, people talk shit. You didn't have to dress it. You didn't have to come forward and have a, a statement. Today, no, but, no, but he, I feel like his, his, himself, he's in a corner he, where he has to address it. Himself, he said on air, like, you don't address He's like, I just don't address it. I don't address it, and it goes away. He's like, and that's what you can't ever address. He's like, once you start addressing these things, he's like, that's where it starts to snowball. And those are his own words. Because I remember when there was a thing came out about... I remember um, I, I remember this episode about a like misogynistic thing that he said or did and that was when Brian Callen and Chris D'Elia all got caught up in that Me Too shit and they tried to Me Too Rogan and he just never responded and one of his guests asked him about it. he's like he just he's like I just don't respond and now that he's responding it's like I feel like he's responding because Spotify's putting the pressure Spotify on Spotify might be putting pressure on yeah. him like listen but they, but what yeah, Spotify's but, saying is like we're not we're just a platform we're not an editor so like correct. it's not yeah, our job Spotify, to like screen what he's putting up Spotify's full of shit because they've removed a ton of his fucking like episodes hundred, like a hundred or so uh, and, uh, 40, 40, and yeah. they've they've removed they've deplatformed other people already yeah Neil Young you know well, what I mean? Well, no, he deplatformed himself. No, but Don't Spotify has fucking music anyway. Spotify has deplatformed other, other people uh, yeah. prior, and it's like, there, I read this article. I think I sent it in the group chat, and it was like, when when Spotify gets put into this place where they have to begin to choose um, profits over um, over perce- perceived profits or something like that. I forgot how they broke it down. Um, they're gonna they're gonna start putting pressure on. Potentially Joe Rogan. The only reason why they haven't so far is because he's the top-rated um, podcast, podcast in, the fucking world. in the world, and he, he makes them a ton of money. But Dude, he gets eleven million views in episode, per episode, right. yeah. which is obviously why they're going after him, right? Like yeah. this is why yeah, these he, smear because campaigns because he, like he's actually going to do something about yeah, it. Yeah. You know, he's so the one leading. The misinformation revolution. didn't work, so now it's racism. Yeah. And if racism doesn't land, they're going to go back to misogyny. Like it's obviously a coordinated it's effort. A triple threat, and they're just going to fucking oh that one didn't work. Let's try this one. Yeah. Oh that yeah, didn't yeah. work. Let's I don't try think this one. I don't think Spotify is going to cancel him because they just spent a hundred million dollars on him. Yeah, I don't think that they. I don't think they're going to cancel him. I think what, and, it, and it, they're making so much money off of him. Yeah. But making, how like, long? How long did he sign for? Like it was a contract right that he got 100 mil for how many years i don't know terry g's gonna have to look that up hold on i'm gonna pull up this this post where they explained it and it it they they laid it out pretty good yeah and i know i know that i know that he i think cn uh cnn gets like eight hundred thousand views like an episode he gets 11 million views yeah. an episode i mean 
it's going to be a shitty fucking investment if if they get rid of them, you know, hundred mm-hmm. mil for nothing. But I don't th- I don't think that they're going to do that. But it's like at, I don't know. You but never you, know. But you, you never know, know because wanna, look at the shit that's going on, dude. All he has to do is fucking make his own platform, make his own shit. He has the yeah, money. Even he if can he's, pay, he can pay people, yeah, he, he goes out there. He gets the right team behind him, and he puts out his own podcast on his own platform. You are he, right about that. And he's got the people that will follow him. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Even if Spotify cancels him, he still has a voice. Anywhere else? Oh yeah, he's you like, know, it's not knows like who he is. The problem is though, what makes me nervous of it? Spotify cancels him. You're gonna get these places like uh, Amazon is gonna refuse to even host his podcast, like they did with. Yeah, um, but he'll find a way to get. He'll find a way to get what, it out dude, there. It's you know how hard many. it is. Gonna, you know how hard it's gonna be to find a place that has the bandwidth to to support your show. Like that's what happened with um, what was that uh, alternative Twitter, um. I don't know what you're talking It was about. right after January 6th. It was that guy, Dan Bongino. He had this uh, platform that was supposed to be an alternative to like Twitter and Facebook. And Amazon and all these, tr- like Microsoft and IBM and all these server farms refused to host it. So, yeah, he started his own company. But the companies that host the internet space where you have to publish to refused to even do it. Uh, so, like, now what? What are you going to do? Start your own internet? Know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's going to be hurdles, but I feel like if anybody can do it, it's going to be Joe Rogan. The guy has money. He has a big following. He's starting his own the fucking Joe Rogan internet. They're pulling out like the stops, like bringing back like uh, an well, episode where he said like the N word. Yeah. They're throwing if he can't figure face. it out, young Jamie definitely will. Yeah, for sure. For sure they will. But yeah, it's crazy that they're going after him, man. But they're going after him for a reason. And people see yeah, that. Yeah, shit that he said fucking 10 years ago. It's like, that's so... F- it's like... No, it's because they lost... They know they lo- they can't control him and they lost They lost the argument on misinformation and nobody gives a shit and they realize that they're losing power so now they're going after him. Like, the misinformation Personally. didn't work. Now it's racism. Yeah. Yeah. And then the thing, too, that people don't realize... Meanwhile, that- he's got mad black people that come onto his show. He has fucking, like, Dave Chappelle's his friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got black friends. It's not like he's a fucking white supremacist so check this out this says despite despite Spotify sticking with Joe Rogan the company is not against censorship the move to keep him is purely fiscal Joe Rogan's podcast was Spotify's most popular podcast in 2021 and the company invested 100 million dollars into him many listeners only use Spotify to listen to his podcast yeah Spotify has taken measures to censor when it doesn't risk profit. Spotify removed over 20,000 podcast episodes from misinformation since the beginning of the pandemic and has removed 40 episodes of Rogan's podcast since he partnered with them. Other podcasts like Steve Bannon's War Room were, were banned by Spotify over a year ago. Yeah, and it so, says, like, so not to cut you off, but the important thing to take out of that is they banned and censor podcasts or music that doesn't benefit them. Joe Rogan is benefiting. Right. Oh, yeah. So the, this, is, this is the last. This is the last wrinkle in their argument. And this is while removing Joe Rogan from Spotify is a poor financial decision. Now it might not always be. Spotify relies on high-profile musicians and partnerships with celebrities like Michelle Obama. If the left, if the left successfully paints Spotify as a life-threatening risk to America and democracy, those individuals would want to avoid the association. At that point, Spotify would need to choose between social leprosy or removing Joe Rogan. Yep. And that's what makes me nervous. I feel like Spotify is too big to get shut down like that. Like people might go, "All right, I'm just going to use Apple Music now," you know, or "I'm I'm just going to use Prime Music now," because like if they're not going to take Rogan off, but so many people are still going to stay on Spotify. Yeah, dude, you have 11 million people. 11 Listen, million. That's listening to Rogan, but like, how many people are just listening to music on Spotify? Like, I don't think Spotify's yeah. going anywhere. No, yeah, it's not, not going to really. No, hurt it's them. not. It's not that Spotify's going to go anywhere. It's that they'll deplatform Rogan. No, I know. I no, know. I'm saying, but like, I don't think Spotify would get to that point. Like, I think they're big enough where, like, with all this backlash and everything, like, they wouldn't have to deplatform Rogan. I, well, you think I they're hope just not. gonna pander? You think they're just gonna pander them? Because you can't shut if they, down. If if enough people put pressure where they feel they need to pander, like like that post said, where they're gonna be, if they don't pander, they're gonna become like pariahs where no one's gonna want to support the platform because they chose to keep rogan like i think it's a that's an uphill battle but it's it wouldn't surprise me with the way these fucking people are man like, i just think there's way too many people listening to spotify like it would take i don't think there's that many people opposing rogan and like even the people that are pro-vax like they might not like like him but i don't think it's enough to like cancel spotify over i don't know man the culture have, they're not canceling spotify though they're canceling. No, he's talking about the individuals not going. No, I'm to saying Spotify. for Spo- oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm saying for like Spotify to have to like answer like to like they could just be like fuck you like freedom of speech. 
Yeah. Well, that's what people don't realize well, that's, either. That's they're, crazy they're, that we're they're getting taking, rid of that. They're taking away the freedom of speech. Joe Rogan can't have people on that are professionals in these fields and speaking about it. That's what Joe Rogan, he came out and said, listen, I have these people on, they're professionals in their field, and all I want to do is hear their opinion. Yeah. That's all he's doing, and that he came out publicly and said that. He, he, and it's like, they're going and censoring him and trying to cancel him. That's freedom of speech. People don't realize, like, that's a form of taking away our right. If they start doing that to Joe Rogan, they're going to start doing it to us. I mean, it already happened to Rem on Instagram. Yeah. Like, he can't freely speak about what he wants. People now are class. Oh, like, it's misinformation. Oh, you're, you're confusing It's people. dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah. And then they shut you down. You can't speak. Soon that shit's going to be in real life. You're going to say something. Someone's going to come along and fucking scoop you up. But yeah. Rogan, Rogan's going on so a fucking big. month and a half of not being able to really use my Instagram. Like fucking, I was able to tag you once. Maybe I can tag you today. <laughs> Doesn't Rogan? But not have only that, but like, yo, I was getting like close to five hundred views per per uh, story. Sorry. Right now, I'm getting under a hundred. What? Yeah, yeah I don't think I've seen your Instagram. I tell you what, they take Rogan off months. Spotify. We're out. Yeah. <laughs> I s- okay. Yeah, but if they if he did get if he did get deplatformed and like kicked off Spotify, he would do what Alex Jones does and just have his own website and you stream right from the website. Like they yeah, they're not gonna like, shut you down like, like that. Like said, you can't you can't rely on that. There's not as much money in it, obviously. No, it's not the money. No, it's, it's no, it's, the, it's the, the ban- servers. It's yeah, the, the bandwidth. bandwidth. Yeah, like like Amazon, Amazon and Microsoft control like eighty percent of the internet server space, right? So you need that space to host your shows. It's like right? a hi- it's like a highway for. For people to jump on if okay. you have a three-lane highway downloading or streaming joe joe rogan's podcast and you have amazon who controls a majority of it now you have eight nine ten more people could get the the stream easier cleaner now if you just do your own thing it's like okay now you got like a two-lane highway you, yeah. Yeah. you have to use like these the smaller way to, you have to use these little side roads rather than the main roads because yeah. the main roads are blocking access to you yeah now you're it's on a fucking dirt road like, thank you fuck check out this guy i wasn't the cable world for a little while this guy this guy, Shit, dude. Flex, Nick, flex Nick those brain so, muscles. Nick's sort of a doctor too. He uh, he gave me some information. I'm sort of a dancer too, dude. Well, you are sort of a dancer, doctor dancer. <laughs> Yo, tell him about the uh, tell him what you told me the other day. What you found out about your uh, ears and shit or nose, whatever. The fuck oh, that was so that was fucking so good. funny. What that oh, ears dude. are self cleaning? No. Yeah, you heard this story, yeah. dude. Dude, I learned a lot that day, bro. It was a good Nick's day. Like a doctor now. Yeah, Lisa so, learned a lot also. Yeah, so I went to uh, I went to the nurse at my job to get my hearing and my my face mask. I wear a respirator for work sometimes, and um, I had to do an ear test. So my wife has been telling me that I'm going deaf for the longest time. That I need to what? go. To, was that? Huh? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that I need to go to a doctor, an ear specialist, because I'm going deaf. So I'm like, I don't think I'm going deaf. Whatever. She's like, your ears are dirty, which they you know they are. Whatever. I don't like going there with a Q-tip and a fucking shovel. Not supposed to. Nope. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I go to this nurse and um, I do my hearing test and it comes back. I did a hearing test four years ago in 2018 and both my hearing tests are almost identical, but there's a dip in the hearing test that she calls the little dipper and the dip and the dip basically refers to a frequency. So I'm strong in all these other frequencies and then my hearing test dips and that certain frequency is women's voices. <laughs> So, Which is fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny, dude. So like, this needs to like, we need to make a post about this because this could save a lot of marriages. Like, yeah. yo, yeah, we literally like some men literally can't hear your goddamn frequency. Exactly, yeah. dude. It's, uh, it's it's so funny. So like, here I am. I'm looking at the nurse. She's explaining the chart to me, and I'm like, yo, no one's ever explained this to me. She's like, all right, let me explain this to you. So she like circles like three dots. She's like, this is this frequency here is like men's voices, loud music, cars. She's like, this over here is like babies. Um, mice, doors squeaking open, which I could hear. I could be in the house and I could hear a little creak and be like, yeah, what was that? You know, and Lisa would be like, what? And I'm like, you didn't hear that? Like, So I'll get up and look and maybe like a door moved and one of the dogs like bumped into it and like opened up a little bit. But then the dip, the little dipper, that there is women's voices. And I'd say 95% of the time, I can't hear my wife. <laughs> and the nurse was like, does she speak very soft? And I'm like, yeah, she does. And she's like, that's why. She's like, because she's on, a, on that frequency that you're having a hard time hearing. She's like, it doesn't mean you're going deaf. It's just that your ears pick up these two frequencies better than this one here. You know you're what's crazy? Lisa talking to like a voice changer on the phone. No, when she talks to me, I just gotta be able to read her lips, dude, because I can't fucking hear her for the life of me. You know what's wild? I wonder, and I wonder, I'm not saying this like comically, although it is kind of comical. We were talking about <clears throat> pretty recently about um, 
how birth control interrupts pheromones for women. Yeah. I wonder how many women have met men where the men can't hear their frequency and then the women get off fucking birth control and are no longer attracted to the men that's, mm. that's like, wild I wonder how, how many times works. some things like that have happened where like there's these problems in relationships because the man literally cannot hear this woman's frequency and then the woman's like pheromones are being interrupted and she's really actually not even attracted to him like how, I wonder how <laughs> often that it's, shit actually goes on it's insane dude. Fe- pheromones and crazy like some women are like attracted to like something in like body odor like you could smell like shit but it like makes like all humans like, are attracted to that body yeah, odor that's crazy. pheromones are the dominant thing that attract you I'm, attra- so I'm, crazy. A, I'm attracted to perfume you can dude. actually smell well I that's like why perfume. they make that I'm attra- yeah. that's perfume. why they, well, that's, <laughs> dude, that's where one time. that's where perfume and cologne comes from it's, was, it's a pheromone yeah. uh, oh. like mimicker that's oh, why okay. they do that yeah, I was working so, in a college once and I smelt this like smell I was like wow this is fucking amazing like where is this girl Whatever. She's, take, she's taking a shit in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> no. It turned pie. out. It was a C clamp. <laughs> it turned out to be an electrician had fucking. It was some electrician Jamaican dude sprayed the wrong perfume. Like he sprayed his wife's perfume or whatever on him. And he sprayed so much of it because he's used to spraying his cologne that it just stunk up the whole hallway. But I'm thinking the whole day it's some fucking hot girl walking around the whole school. No, it's some fucking dirty electrician. Long, long, long story short, Luigi went up humping this, this yeah. Jamaican guy. <laughs> no, I did bang an electrician once, oh. but it wasn't uh, the Jamaican dude. You, you know that you can like you can actually the pheromone thing. You can smell sickness, like when people are sick or like um, have some certain types of diseases. It alters their pheromones, where like you can actually pick up on that. That's like from that's back in the day, like you know. <clears throat> Pre antibiotics and shit like that. That's how people knew. Like you, you it's not something like where you like. Oh you wow, you like, smell sick, but like you can pick up on people where you're like, ooh, something's not right with this person. And is that like damn. with dogs when they like when someone has cancer or someone has something wrong with them? The dog is like, yeah, very over, similar. Like, and, and now dogs smell fear. Dogs can yeah. smell fear on you. Yeah, you know that's it's a it's a subtle thing. It's not something you're conscious of, but you'll you can walk past someone even still like say you're walking through you know you're walking through town and you see somebody and for some reason it like something kind of goes off in you where you're like oh and you want to stay away from that person there they could be sick they could there's something about their pheromones that tip you off it's like a like this primal thing in you where you know like oh stay away from them something something's dirty. not jiving with you they, they don't smell right they got yeah. Yeah. full-blown aids the full-blown yeah AIDS, dude. you can so. smell that shit no, that's crazy to me. That whole thing is crazy. But then I found out too that with the with the ears, the ears are self cleaning. So is the vagina. Yeah, I wish. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> it sounds like a third grader in like sex ed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Those are disgusting. <laughs> Girls are gross. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> no, but that I thought it was pretty cool though. Because like. For me, I don't. I don't use Q-tips. Like my wife uses like bobby pins, and like she'll like scoop out the earwax. Yo, yo, uh, people get what? off on that shit. Like, I like, have, they, like Oh, I fucking love. I love that. Well, that's, the and then you told me that if you use it too much, you start itching. Later on that night, I'm like laying in bed. I'm like, fuck, my ears itching. I went and got a Q-tip and fucking scratched it with it. But still, I was like, wow, <laughs> Nick's yeah. like a fucking so doctor. I love it. Yeah. Doctor Nick was you right. You got to be careful. That happens with your asshole too, Luigi. <laughs> oh God. Well, I, yeah, I don't use Q-tips for that. I got, I got something a little thicker. Oh God, no! But they say that if you clean your ear, if you clean your ears too much, the earwax in there is like to protect like your ear. It's yeah, a, so it doesn't in, get dirty. Yeah, it's in there for a reason. Traps dirt. So now you take that earwax out of your ear, and your skin is just basically bare. Yeah. So then it feels it itchier. Keeps it, yeah. And then you wind up Moist. sitting there cleaning your ear more and more and more. So it was pretty funny, man. I came Dirt's back. Dirt's good for you, bro. Yeah, for sure. Shit's good for I'm you. a nail biter, dude. I feel like biting people, my nails has helped me out all these years. Sick. Getting dirt in my mouth, getting a strong immune system, dude. Oh, yeah, when I eat lunch, my hands are like black from all like the bulk grease. Dude, that's what I'm saying, yeah. bro. When you eat ass, eat ass. Yeah, that yeah. that'll help out your immune system for sure, dude. Yeah, but don't let your, your fork fall on the ground. Yeah, people are like, <laughs> oh my god, that fell on the floor. Don't eat it. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Dude, you got like a 15 second rule Yeah they're like 5 second rules It's been a half an hour I'm like I should say It depends it, on what it is bro Like if it's If it's if like sauce it's on delicious. it like Yeah if it's delicious It's unlimited dude, bro like, I'm not wasting that It depends, depends where it fell too 
I dropped a piece of one of those pistachio cookies yesterday. That's unlimited. I don't care how long that's on the ground. I mean, it's delicious. I was like, oh, and it was like right by everyone's feet, and I was like, oh. Yo, pistachios unlimited time. They have. Do you like macadamia nut? Yeah. yeah, they have a macadamia nut cookie, like Hawaii. It's Hawaii's cookie or some shit like that. It's like the cookie they're known for, but it's a macadamia nut chocolate chip cookie. It's fucking incredible. Yeah, macadamia nuts are the shit. I'm gonna those those macadamia nut cookies from Costco. Costco that are in the three pack. It's like oatmeal raisin dude, chocolate this shit chip. Slapped. And, oh I didn't even God. know. I didn't oh, even know they had that. So, dude, dude they, they go, never had them. Package goes. From, they they're the first row to get cleaned out every yeah. time. Yeah, dude. dude what, Taylor brought them here that one night, and I ate like 17 of them. She's like, yeah. "What do you like, macadamia?" I'm like, "I fucking love these things." Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know that. they had a. They had that up here, dude. Their cookies are so good up here. Yeah, Costco makes some good baked goods, dude. Yeah, Costco it's, holla at the podcast. It's usually it's usually uh, <laughs> the macadamias baby. that go first, and the chocolate chips, and then the oatmeal is the last ones. Dude, stand. oatmeal, Yo, they're oatmeal crazy. even good though. The yeah, oatmeal are. raisins are really good, but I just feel like for just some not reason, as good as everything yeah, else. Yeah, like you when you you get to a cookie, you're like, oh, I gotta go for the sweets, but like. If there was just oatmeal cookies, they'd still get cleaned out because oh, they yeah. are delicious. Yeah, yeah, so good. yeah, you know, yeah, but they can't compete with the other ones. No, yeah, no. But you sugary. know what it is. This is the way I lo- I view those things. Like I'll have a bunch of those macadamia nuts, and I'm like, all right, let me have an oatmeal cookie so that I stop the addiction. Right, like I'll eat like four or five of those macadamias, and if I keep going, I'm gonna keep wanting to eat more. So then I'll have an oatmeal raisin. I'm like, all right, that's delicious, but I don't want 17 more after that. See, that's not me, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta uh, just eat the whole if, thing. If I'm pounding those macadamia nut cookies, dude, and I have an oatmeal raisin, I'm, I'm like, now pounding I'm oatmeal. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, no I, my I brain now, switched. I'm, and I'm now pounding I'm, fucking oatmeal. I'm going back to the macadamia nut because it's like, yo, I don't want to have like this oatmeal taste, like yeah. just like I want to oh, just, wow. I want to just eat all the macadamia. Yeah, the, yeah. If I'm pounding the oatmeal raisin, it makes me appreciate Dude, the your, macadamia. Your stomach, the oatmeal raisin is the yellow light of cookies to me. That's your stomach so has a way of like digesting desserts very fast, so you could just pig out in desserts and keep eating them. It's not at all what it is. It is. <laughs> no, no, it is. No, you have a set. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, it's like stomach. Yeah, you do. Like you when you go. Like if you have a big thing of sushi and you're like, fuck, I want some ice cream. You have a second stomach for the ice cream and it just digests. The dessert. The dessert stomach. That shit is. The shit is you like. Don't, you don't have a dessert stomach. The no. dessert stomach. It they design this stuff. Thing. They design cookies and chips and stuff like that to be addictive. There's like yeah. a whole science behind the right amount of crunch and the right amount of flavoring to keep your sugar. You, to keep you addicted to crush the bags and to keep eating those cookies. There's like a whole. I watched a documentary about yeah, it. Science ta- is your stomach digestive. That's, that's, that's actually dessert. not the science. Not it, is. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> that is. That is not that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Luigi, Luigi sounds pretty convincing right now. Luigi sounds like Buddy the Elf have right you, now. Have you ever <laughs> fucking? <laughs> have, have you ever seen me? Eat dessert it fucking just goes through it just it just goes in what about the fast food joints that like pump out the smoke like burger king oof burger king sits and they just dump out the smoke out of the top just to get everyone like salivating in the streets yeah. to come in bro i haven't had i haven't fast had fast food, food in, so in probably a decade really yeah, yeah. same dude I, I wouldn't say a decade i haven't had it in mad long but I am thinking about grabbing one of those filet fishes. I heard them talking about it on Joe Rogan's podcast. What filet of fish? Of all the things yeah. you're gonna get, a filet of fish. Bro, the so fisherman, listen, he's gonna get frozen blocked fish. Yo, yeah. so so I didn't know this, but McDonald's filet fish is actually sustainably caught. Um, do you wild, believe that? Wild caught po- Pollock, Alaskan you, Pollock. Do you yeah. believe that? I don't believe you, you, that. You, you yeah, bro. Dude. This guy, dude. victim of fucking advertising. <laughs> they, they, they're mushy dude. like meats dude, together. That dude, dude, I got a beanstalk to sell you. Dude, fucking. <laughs> I'm definitely not Yo, buying when I was fish a kid, from I, McDonald's. I, when I was a kid, I used to crush those. Yeah, the fish yeah, the shows. Yeah, that was my favorite thing. Oh, God oh, damn. God. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, man, like, as a kid, and, like, even right now, if I had a, if I had any desire to eat fast food, it would be a regular hamburger from McDonald's. Yeah. That yeah. hamburger? That yeah. explains no, I'm going you with, so fucking well. I'm yeah. going with that's the my checkers. Oh, checkers the, um, fries are so good. The checkers fries, but the chicken sandwich they had on, like, the Texas toast... From, put from the, checkers from checkers they had a chicken sandwich it was on like texas that. toast and i used to get it plain and just put the fries on that with a little bit of hot sauce it was fucking incredible Dude, i'm I going like, i'm going classic jbc from wendy's yeah or the spicy chicken sandwich yeah. from wendy's so gas chick-fil-a like wendy's. Oh, the spicy chicken sandwich from wendy's with checkers fries on it 
Yo, you, you make going to fucking stops? pull fucking you make two stops? That's I, dedication. I, 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 yeah. dude, we were like cl- making a fucking meal here, dude. That was insane. Well, if, like, if I get if I get the fries from Wendy's, the sandwich from McDonald's, and then I get yeah. if I get the the drink and the desserts from well, because the fries King. he's got a fry stomach too. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. fried no, no, it's all got to satisfy that second stomach. Has you got to hit that triple threat? Well, I get no, I get a milkshake because I got to satisfy the ice cream stuff. Dude, I knew that I know this guy. He said he was like a normal dude around twenty. He's like now like my age. A normal dude around twenty. What is he now? He's definitely not normal, dude. He's definitely. Is, not normal. Are you talking about me? No, no. Oh, okay. This guy was normal. He said till about he was twenty years old, and he had a panic attack, and it changed his way of thinking, his way of living forever. Yeah. So at twenty years old, he said up to twenty, he was like making out with girls. He worked at Wendy's. He did this. He like yeah, like all these like girls he'd make out with by the dumpster, by the shake machine. Ew. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. So now if you look at him, he's That's complete, not normal. Now if you look at him, you're like, yo, what, do you what, mean? what happened? But listen to this. So when he had this panic attack, dude, he wound up being so off that as he was like hanging out with like a girlfriend or a girl that he was hanging out with, all he could think about was the fast food restaurants that he was going to hit up on his way home. Uh. And this motherfucker would leave the girl, right? Done chilling with her, end of the night, and he would hit up McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, and yo, he would make all these stops before he got home, and he would hit up all of these fast food places. What dude. the fuck? I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? You're still alive right now? Like, how are you? How are you? <laughs> how big is he all? right now? He's not big. He's like, you know, he's like a shorter dude. He's not like gross or anything, but I, I don't know. I don't know how you do that, dude. Damn. I mean. I used to like fast food, but not that much. I mean, when I was a kid, I ate it just because it was convenient. I yeah. don't know if I would say that like I, I, I really enjoyed it. You know what I mean? But it was just there. I feel like Happy Meals there. are such bullshit. Like a little toy, so it makes kids like want it like so bad, yeah. and they charge you way more fucking money. I saw that the yeah. Happy Meal was like six bucks, and I'm like, you could get more food for six dollars, like off the dollar menu. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, but the dollar menu wasn't always around either. No, I'm saying now, like present day. Like yeah. I got Wendy's the other day. It was always it. around when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got a uh, cool oh. twenty piece. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, not a hundred years ago. I'm like you, fucking <laughs> no, dude. dude a lot has changed in a hundred years, yeah. bro. Relax, bro. Been... Yeah, uh, I remember back when the when real super size, the, fucking, the like, real super size before they they toned down the super size was ridiculous, bro. Yeah, before it was that like movie fucking came out, fifty five like ounces yeah. of fucking soda, <laughs> like forty eight, fifty <laughs> ounces, goddamn gallon of fucking Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, did you see the uh, the documentary on super HBO? Size uh, that documentary on HBO about the Monopoly game they yes. rigged it how yeah. fucking crazy was, was that yeah, it was crazy oh, yeah they rigged it for years yeah, right? yeah, yeah, we it talked was, about it was this so a lot yeah, yeah. yeah when it was like happening but that was just like such a wild story that like dude I took the, corrupt, I used to work, corruption between the buns I used to yeah work, that's right <laughs> 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 that was an episode yeah, that was an episode yeah. 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 yeah dude that's so good corruption between they the buns called, yeah they should have called the fucking documentary that bro those yeah, are like the best shit of the podcast it's probably like a year ago that's so funny can we name this podcast corruption between the Part two, yeah. Part two, yeah. Just this episode. I worked at I worked at McDonald's when I was younger, and bro, I took home a whole fucking stack of cups, and I didn't win that shit. Did you really? Uh, I worked at McDonald's when I was younger too, the one on one twelve here in Medford. I worked on North Ocean, and uh, (laughs) dude, I started so much trouble in that place because I (laughs) I was working like a lot over the summer. I was like working overtime and shit, and I was making no money. And we got like new management, and I hated them, and. I don't remember what the whole chaos was, but at one point in time, I was working in the grill, and I took you know like the um, like the baking paper, like those long sheets yeah, of paper yeah, that cover like a cookie sheet, yeah, or, whatever, or yeah. like you know you line like the trays. The I took that, paper? Yeah, yeah, parchment paper. I took that. And I fucking hung up a sign. I wrote like, "Every revolution starts with a single act of defiance." <laughs> and, like hung it up on the grill, <laughs> oh and I tried. God. I tried to get all the grill workers to stop making food and shit for like an hour Dude, and like protest so we would get raises. <laughs> that's fucking great. Dude, that's you, so saw, funny. you were trying to like unionize McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like 16 years old trying to fucking start a union at McDonald's. Dude, that's amazing. You put that quote up. Did that's you get so anybody funny. behind you, or it was just you? We get one kid until the manager was like, "Get to fucking work," and he's like, "Dude." And I was like, come on, bro. We got to stand strong. And he, was he, the, went, he was the fry guy. Yeah, he went right back to work, and I got dragged in the office. And uh, I got yelled at, too, another time because they put me in drive through after that. And they used to have, they were called crew chiefs. So Cop you were, were kind of like, you know, the boss of a shift or whatever. And they had these, like, blue shirts. And there was a, 
a box of them underneath the register where I was working. So I put one on and pretended that I was like the boss through the drive through, like giving people discounts and shit. That's awesome. I started like giving orders to people and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Funny. Yo, did you ever just like, I feel like if I was doing that, like I would do dumb shit, like make, put, I did. Wait, take a burger there? and put like a bunch of chicken nuggets on it and then like a McChicken patty and like just, you know, like make like Scooby Doo type sandwiches. My, my fast food experience, I worked at TCBY for like a oh, couple years. TCBY was the shit. The oh, that? you told us it's about it. It's, it's a, a yogurt place. Yogurt yeah, it's, a, yo- it's a yogurt place. And my um, sister used to take me there all the time when I was younger. Yeah, and then they got uh, they got Nathan's in there, and we used to do exactly what Terrence said. We would just make like four <laughs> four burger patties, dude. We'd shove like French fries in the middle of one, chicken nuggets on top of the other, hot we'd, dogs in the middle of your yogurt. Dude, we'd have, <laughs> we'd have like huge like burgers, dude, like with shit sticking out of it. But yeah, we had a ball, man. We had a blast at that place. That was like one of my favorite jobs as a kid. When we, I worked at McDonald's, we would have food fights and shit, dude. The one, the one Rem, time, didn't you leave? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one time they were like, bro, it was like a, a day like this where it was fucking freezing out, right? <laughs> They're like, uh, cause I used to like, I hated working there, yo. Like, so I would just do dumb shit. And fucking, they, the one time they got like annoyed to me. They were like, yo, go sleep the parking lot. <laughs> so I fucking go out there, put put my jacket on. I'm like, literally, I was out there for like four minutes. I'm like, yo, fuck this. This sh- it's fucking freezing out. I'm like, well, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm making like fucking ten dollars an hour. Like, so I lived like right up the block. I walked home, fucking chilled there for maybe that's your karma, a a bit. karma of why like all this shit happens to you at like. Starbucks and fast food places because you just didn't give a fuck about McDonald's. Yeah. You were like, nah, fuck these guys. <clears throat> now, fucking years later, you're just like, oh well. You go in and there's, they always have an issue. Fuck them. But yeah, so I walked home and then, you know, two, three hours later, whenever my shift <laughs> ended, I walked back, clocked out. <laughs> Dude, how big is the McDonald's Wait, parking so- lot? Two or three hours <laughs> sweeping it. Well, no, it's the one by the parking ride. So I was like, is there you know, really like, like a hierarchy of like, fucking how McDonald's operates in that way where like you have to have a crew chief and like someone underneath yeah. you and then yeah. a manager a and then a fucking yeah. boss and international corporation yeah 100% but like inside each one like, like the fry like station has its own like like three people to fucking Foreman. run a five no <laughs> no not like uh, that so there's French like <laughs> there's general <laughs> there's general managers Yo, it's like going to managers. a construction site you have all your fucking laborers who are just doing the shit that you see and then you have like your management you know then you have your no I, I thought it was like the grill has like a crew chief with like all these people on the grill and then the Fry has a fucking no, crew you chief. Have a, you okay. have a, a crew chief was basically for the whole crew was like in lieu of a manager, right? Like if a manager wasn't oh, on that okay, day, right, the crew right, chief that, was that like the second little, in charge. I'm basically. thinking there's a whole full, fucking like there's little fucking groups no, of like there's no oh, captain of the Fry <laughs> station. <laughs> the the <bro>. register <laughs> has its own people. The fucking grill, the fries, the <laughs> no, shakes. They, didn't they have like a, a like a front and a back? When did the uh, like they had someone who like a like a uh, yeah, crew like chief front end, for yeah, front the end grill end. and then they had a crew chief for like not the front when end. I was there maybe that changed think, but I not when I was there they did I was the manager at TCBY dude yo really? well, I am the manager yeah. B <laughs> yeah, I was dude that was the best shit ever when did the um the ice cream machine break yeah <laughs> honestly it, yo my show it, it used to break all the time sometimes I would just tell people that because I feel like getting ice cream. Oh, dude. Yeah. I dude, McFlurries? Yeah. McFlurries, dude, McFlurries were so good. Used, dude, I used to make the sickest McFlurries. Yeah. I just like all that shit, shit in up. there and M&M's. Yep. You dude, know, I M&M used, McFlurry? I used, to bring, I used to bring home parfaits every night. Nice. Really? Yeah. And I would hook people up, bro. They used to love me at TCPY. I was like the man. People would come in and be like, what's going on? Like, hey, man, what's going on? I'd make them a parfait, dude. I would you just make like... make the Spaggy G parfaits. Dude, I, would, I, would dump, <laughs> I, would, I would dump toppings in there like you wouldn't believe... I like use the whole thing. So. You know what's crazy though? I believe it. Yeah, dude, you should <laughs> believe it, bro. See that I believe, but then you tell me something like the fucking doctor story. I'm like, eh, is dude, that really I had true. The, dude, I had the chart, bro. I had. The I chart. I know. I'm just saying. It's you know, dude. You look, get I like very to, sarcastic. I, on I like some to, stuff I like to play hard. around. I like to play around. But I, I and I, tell I, the I, truth sometimes. I appreciate it, but that's why sometimes I'm yeah. like, next the, the boy who cries wolf, all the time. All the time. And then the one time you're serious, you're like, wait, are you serious? Like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the boy that cries cries wolf but when the wolf comes around I'm, I'm usually not the guy that needs help no so. but you do when you no, when, when you're, you're the guy that gets everybody else killed because they don't believe you when you're like <laughs> <laughs> when you're like yo there's a wolf like, yeah, fuck yeah, you right. man. I'm not falling for this shit again <laughs> yeah. No, but he'll. What happened to Luigi? He didn't believe Nick there really was a wolf <laughs> if Nick goes if Nick's like yeah I swear my mother alright then you know it's true yeah that's usually what I'm telling that's, the truth, that's probably the only time I know yeah. Nick's telling the truth yeah, other than that mom. it's like 
Uh, is he really like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, 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 no, but even no. when he says that, you're still like, there's yeah. part of no, me that doesn't want to no, believe never, it. Nick I've will say lied. something, and I'm always like, "Are you fucking with me?" Like, I gotta never, have to say that. Dude, I've never he lied tells me he's like, it. "Yo, I, no, but I'm it's saying a it's scientific stuff. thing where men can't hear women." I'm like, "Are you sh- like? Is that?" Like yeah. a real thing Like He'll say that And then he'll be like Yo what's that behind you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He'll piggyback it right off he's, so, he's, so, he's so good at that He'll be like He'll be like Oh hey what up Dude it's the guinea in me bro I can't help it Dude one time I was going through The drive thru And it was uh I don't know if you guys ever did scavenger hunts when you were in high school or whatever. Yeah. Of course, I used, to go, I used to go all fucking out. Like I was Mr. Scavenger Hunt. Like you I, love that I wanted, shit. I wanted Mr. to cross scavenger. off. I wanted to cross off every <laughs> single thing. So one of the things this is actually like fucked up. Like I don't know. I needed the points for the scavenger hunt, but like looking back, I felt I still feel bad about it to this day. We're in the drive thru and <laughs> till this day, to this day. <laughs> So one of the things was fucking fire in the hole. So I got like a large fucking. They oh like, my they, god! They asked me what they asked me what drink I wanted, and I was like flashing fruit punch. It was like high C. So I get like this super sized cup. She comes back to hand me my food. I took the lid off and just boom right in the right boom right in the chest, and then we peeled out. Oh <laughs> my I'm like god. that. Looking back, like that's so <laughs> fucked up. And then another thing, we had to like go into Seven Eleven. Wait 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 wait. That girl was probably crying. Dude. Yeah, I know. I told I you I just feel bad about it. <laughs> what? Uh, where were you? What dude, town? Uh, hot don't say oh, hot pog yeah, McDonald's. Say, I'm probably hot pog Wendy's. Dude, they're the still one on right, one by, right, yeah, right by the high school. Dude, they still uh, got your picture from 14 years ago <laughs> hanging up. And then Yo, another, my cousin and, worked there. Really? About 14 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't do that to her. But um, another thing was you had to go into 7-Eleven and get like a the drink carriers fill it up with Slurpees and then just drop it on the floor <laughs> that was part of the scavenger hunt yeah damn we fucked you know, up scavenger man. hunt we just stole shit yeah. yo one of the things well, wait, wait 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 but how would that work though like so you gotta video it oh okay dude one of the things we, we, didn't, we didn't have video yeah, we didn't, we didn't have that. that's, well, that's why you stole it. shit cause you had to bring it back yes <laughs> <laughs> one of the how things, do we know he really got this <laughs> One of the things we misread, I thought it said you had to run through the drive through <laughs> naked. So I got naked and ran through the drive through But I didn't know, like, to get the points, I had to, like, time it. So, like, they were, like, hand- handing you your food in your car, and I was supposed to run by and steal it naked and then just, like, take off. Oh, my God. So I just ran through a drive through naked for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Derek story. Wait, yeah, do fun. you have the... The, the vi- video uh, that, this, so? was, this was like 2007 so it was before like you know camera like video cameras on your phones and stuff where you had like actual cameras so Wait, you so you're, much- you're sitting there with a fucking like video yeah like- camcorder <laughs> 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 recording this shit yeah <laughs> fucking VHS recorder bro <laughs> We used, to, we used to fly it's around with those in a while. skating, dude. We used to skate with those things on our shoulders to record our buddies. Dude, it's so cool. It That's was so, so funny. I still have two skate videos from like '95. Really? Yeah, VHS. Yeah, bring those in. I know. I was. I've been looking for like a like a VCR, but someone told me I can go to like Costco and they can just put like yeah, a they DVD. Can, yeah, they can switch it over. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, have I didn't know that. that. You need to. I'll, well, I'm probably not going to remember. But if you text me like four times, I'll remember to bring the VCR. <laughs> you have a VCR? Have. Yeah, dude, we might have to watch that. Maybe no, just go get it shit. digitized. Yeah. Dude, it was it was yeah, literally twenty bucks. Twenty twenty two. Really? Yeah, VCRs are cheap. Oh, they still sell VCRs, dude. No, no, not new ones. Not even old ones, bro. Yeah, you, no, no way. You could get one on eBay or something. Just oh, go actually, get the fucking yeah, thing was, digitized. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just go get it made into a fucking DVD. And what, how they much does that sell cost? DVDs? Like twenty bucks, yeah. you said. Yeah, twenty bucks. Do That's they still sell, sell DVDs? Yeah. No. Yes, they do. do. They, they sell no. Remember, no Blu-rays. Yeah, do you they remember definitely like still early, sell DVDs. Like early mid two thousands, Best Buy was the shit. They had a fucking DVD section a mile long. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like a rack now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. My yeah, well, my buddy Netflix literally like that. growing up, he was like so proud of his DVD collection. The shit was like. Seven feet tall. Oh yeah, people were so super. Feet I have wide. thousands of DVDs at home. Yeah, we go to his like house and like book. smoke weed, and he'd be like, "Yo, what do you guys want to watch?" And yeah, it's like, "Well, what do you got?" He's like, "You kidding?" And I'm so like, nah, "My parents bro, used to." I'm not gonna sit here and read your whole collection, bro. Yo. Pick something out. <laughs> you go on Amazon. Copy them. The um, VCRs are like. Four hundred, five hundred dollars. Look for at this guy. You're on Amazon way. right now, all by yourself. Yeah. Wow. Listen, <laughs> thousand, thousand dollars right here, guys. Amazon for a VCR. Dude, it's vintage, bro. Oh no, you got a DVD player combo with you. No. Do you remember when no when cars problem. in like ninety nine, two thousand, when cars came with a DVD? I mean, a, a CD and a tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, wow. Wow. That's the both worlds here. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I remember yeah. when they started to put TVs in like the back of the fucking Yeah, 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 the little yeah, flip the screen. Seats. That's where I thought Dave was going yeah. with that. 
Well, no, no, no not never, the flip screen up, like in the back of the seat. I remember watching like Pimp My Ride. Dude, that's an R.I.P. industry right there. Remember, like aftermarket shit. Like, you you have to go get like your tape deck and your fucking your TVs and your sound systems. Now they're all stock. I think they were just talking about this on Joe Rogan the other day. How like yeah, like how you like you used to get your car and then you go and like get it, you know, stereo put in this that the other thing. Those were huge businesses. Yeah. Now it's like that's how they come. They come with like mad nice fucking touchscreens. Yeah. Like things. Yeah. Sound systems. Yeah. Stock. Yeah. The touchscreen of my car is nicer than any fucking sound system I ever got. Yeah. For, yep. That I spent that whole industry thousands of fucking just on. got tanked I remember, out. I remember yeah. my buddy going to Avenue Sound over here in Patchogue oh, for such a, a yeah. for a I guess like I don't even know what you call it like a stereo competition to see who had like the best yeah the ste- bass offs yeah bass yeah. off yeah <laughs> that was a thing yeah and wow. we were, you don't remember virgins huh yeah, yeah for so, real so we, we went there we went there bumping oh you never you've never heard it. Here in Patrick, they do it every year. They still do this? Yeah. yeah it's so, so funny. We, we I went could probably there. go there in a Honda we, Civic with the stock well, radio and we beat went, them all We now. went there with um, my buddy. I know, buddy I know Ster- this kid I graduated with used to compete You're going to let me talk to you? I mean, like, jeez. I've <laughs> <laughs> been trying to tell the same story for like 30 go seconds. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> it was between Luigi and Remy. Just Yo, Remy, go clean the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get out of here anyway. <laughs> so we fucking, we went there bumping some old... CD. It was like EPMD. What'd you say? It? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Now, now we're gonna have awkward silence. Now I'm not gonna finish, <laughs> <laughs> now not, now not gonna finish the story. Uh, Come on, sorry, Nick, sorry, listeners, sorry. sorry. Come on, I want to hear it. Yeah, hear it. Let's hear it. Go ahead. We're not gonna fuck with you anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. I promise. It's not worth it, dude. Dude, it's worth it. <laughs> dude, you yeah. like Bosco last dude, night. You, for, you forget I'm a guinea, bro. I'm stubborn. Dude, that was Bosco last night. Like, oh, you're going to come over here? You're just going to sit by yourself. So then he goes, he acts like he's coming up with us, and then he just takes a seat here with his back to us, sitting down at the table by himself, <laughs> staring at the wall. Yo, but that's so Bosco, funny. though, dude. He has, like, a sense of humor that, like, he doesn't even try. Yeah. When he tries, it's a dud. When he tries to be funny or crack a joke, he's like, oh, that wasn't funny. He's like, nah, dude, you tried. That's why. Yeah. Don't try. Don't try. Just be yourself. He came in one night, and he didn't say hi to anybody. That was the funniest <laughs> shit. He comes in, and he just scoots to the bar. <laughs> he to the bar. And Danny sees him. He's like, really, Bosco? He's going to come in and not say shit to nobody? He's like, ah, fuck. He's like, all right. He's like, let's get this over with. And he just starts giving him, <laughs> like, seven of us high fives and shit. I was just like, that's so funny, dude. Yeah, trying to, trying doesn't work out for me. When I, when I try, things usually go bad. When yeah. I don't try, yeah, that's smooth it, sailing. Yo, it has to be organic. <laughs> Speaking of trying, every fucking guy on Long Island, you have to learn how to try a different fucking approach when you're trying to hit on girls. I'm sitting there last night watching probably 50 people try to hit on this bartender. And she's just laughing at every one of them. That's a bad move, though. You can't hit on yeah, the bartender. Yeah, hit on the bartender. Her job is to flirt with you and get money. And yeah. she probably has every book, every guy at the bar hitting on her. So she does. Yeah. Literally, every guy at the bar is hitting on her. I'm just, I'm yeah, sitting there the laughing at every fucking one of them. You don't fucking talk to her. Yeah, you throw your drink on her. Yeah. Where are you at? <laughs> Changing times? It usually works. <laughs> uh, tap room. Hey, Yo, that's fire in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> she yells at you. You want a scavenger hunt? No, but you can't do that. You can't like uh, you can't hit on the bartender. It's like going to the strip club and like actually thinking you're hitting on the stripper. Yeah, so the stripper's not there. To no, but it is true though. I feel like even if like you weren't hitting on the bartender, like every girl, it's like it's a different playing field. There's like different rules. Dude, how about try just having a conversation with them, and if something fucking if something clicks and happens, great. Yes. If not, go on to the next one. Yeah. And that's the thing, man. People put too much stress on it. Like that's all you have to do is just start a conversation. Just, if you can yeah. start a conversation, you're halfway there. Yeah, yeah. just talk to them. You don't gotta fucking throw your hands up in the air and do all this stupid crazy yep. shit that everyone's trying what if to do. There's a song that tells you to put your hands yeah. in the air. No, nah, fuck that. <laughs> throw, throw your hands at the <laughs> DJ then. I'm just, it's confusing. Yeah, don't go don't go up to her pounding your chest, dude. Don't do that. What if you just walk out with your dick out? Hey. That you this might what be, I got. You might, that, you might get sometimes arrested. that does work. <laughs> it ain't suck not, itself. I, I don't know about the tap room. Do you might get arrested? <laughs> if you, that's more the meatball. <laughs> if you're um, somebody that we know, that might work. Dude, I've known guys that did that. Dude, they go and they just meet a girl. Like they're hanging out, and it's just like she looks over, and it's just like, hey, and it's just like, can you put that back in your pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, why did you think that was gonna work? That is like the worst approach ever. I mean, you got a fifty-fifty shot. 
I got. I don't think it's that high. Yeah, it's not that high. I'm thinking like seventy thirty. I think that's even high. That's pushing it, dude. It's like you got seventy thirty if you have like eight inches or more. Like even I got two. I got two point seven three inches. I got zero. I got zero chance. You said this before on the podcast that dicks are like the ugliest body part ever, bro. Yeah, they are. Yeah, chicks are not. I own one and I still look at it. I own one. And I'm like, yo, what is up with this thing, dude? It's funny looking. I'm like this thing is not attractive. No, there's, there's, we, I think, yeah, we talked about this, like sending dick pics. It's like, Bad no, no chick is like, oh wow, yeah, look at you that know, meat like, stick. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta lay down a couple heavy O's before a girl's like, yeah, your dick is pretty. Heavy O's, yeah, orgasms. Oh, yeah, I was like, what? you'll, you'll, figure, you'll figure it out one day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's, we'll get there one day, and right? that's like a, that's like a rare thing. I not every like girl O's. that you you drop the O's <laughs> are gonna be like, yo, you have a really nice dick, like. I think it's just like a handful of girls that are really like into like dicks and like they're like, oh, you have a really nice dick. Or like, there's two types of women, right? And I've heard this before, and I think it's true, right? There's like, and it, this is like, there's girls who give blowjobs because they have to, and then girls who will love nothing more than suck a dick. Yeah. And God bless those women. <laughs> God bless those women. <laughs> yeah, like I would say, you know, there's true. chicks that are just like very like, you know, it's just it's kind of like part of the. The routine, they're like, uh, okay, is it hard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh. And then there's girls that are like, yeah, yeah. just gonna do I guess it's your shit. Blah, 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 blah. I guess it's the same for guys though, right? Because there's guys out there that just go down and eat the muffin. To well, it depends see, on what it, it depends you, on who. I don't it is, see too. for You're me, a bitch like if you don't. I'm, I'm way too, <laughs> I'm way too narcissistic <laughs> when it comes to that. Like if I'm, if you, if this girl's not enjoying herself, I'm not enjoying myself, right? Yeah. Like, and I think that's so just, I don't think it's narcissistic. I, I think that's no, normal. that's natural. Well, I don't know because I feel like there's a lot of dudes <laughs> out there that are mad selfish. They're like. Yeah, they you know, like I, you hear they, women say, like, "Oh, how shitty this person got this guy was," or they came quick, and it's like, "Dude, what are you doing?" Like, <laughs> I don't know how, how can you be that bad? Like, and it's like, dude, they mad dudes that first. I think are just selfish. They look at sex like I'm just going to do what I need to do, and I don't care about yes. this girl getting off. But like, I've always thought like about sex, like if I'm a barber, right? Like, if I, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear this. Yeah. So, <laughs> I gotta hear this. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like so my dick is the clipper <laughs> no all right so hear me out hear me out right so say you guys are all, say say nick is say nick comes to me fade. nick comes to me to get his hair cut right and i send him out there and a butcher his hair and he comes back and you guys are all like yo who fucked your fucking head up and he's like this yeah. fucking guy d you guys ain't coming to me right you're not gonna come get skilled up now i send him out with a freshie and you guys are like yo who cut your hair? Like, yo, my boy D-Rock, you guys are all going to come see me, so right? So give that good dick, she's going to tell her exactly. friends. Exactly. They're going to yeah. advertise. Like, you got to make sure you lay it down when they're like, yo, That's this kid you blew my like... socks off last night. You know? And then when, when it doesn't work out with that girl, all her friends want to fuck you. Yeah. Right. But then that girl definitely hasn't been around the block because if you are that good, she's not telling her girlfriend. <laughs> no, the they day, are. Because the they day are. when you guys break up, she don't want all of her girls running to it you. It doesn't matter. It's no, a, they're women, telling them. Women have, like, competition with that shit. It's like yeah. a thing that they do. There's no way they're not talking about it. I, I don't, I Anytime, don't think, I think they, the season vets, the season no, vets, they talk. No, they talk. They all talk about it. Dude, the second a girl meets you, right, and if you sent that dick pic, your dick is in their group chat immediately. The, like, the first time you have sex, they're texting one of their friends right away. They yep. all know yeah, right the fuck they know. they know. They know. I've gone to the point where, like, when I get to the point of sending a girl a dick pic, I'm like, here, this is a good one because I know you're gonna send. I know you're gonna show your friends. So like, I look good in this one. Yeah. Like, here you go. You're, nice. you're, and there's for sure like some girls know less, but there's always that one friend who that, knows all. Who the, knows everything about yeah. you? They know like he does this, he does that. He's good at this. He's not good at that. Like they know everything. Yeah. They know everything, and like that. I've noticed. I feel like determines. Like, so say you meet a girl, you've been hanging out a little bit. And now you're gonna go meet their friends. If you've been laying it down well. They like you a little bit more in that first, like you they're a lot so? nicer the first time you meet them. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, how would you know if you, if you never laid down bed? Because I've never had a bad experience, but I know people that have. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that is true, though, man. Like I'm the same way. Like if if my partner, whoever I'm with is not enjoying themselves i could not continue no that's why i could never be a rapist no no serious dude like i i, 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 literally, I literally i literally stopped in the middle of having sex yeah. and been like you know i'm sorry can't dude, if they're just going. laying there like it's not even fun that's what i'm yeah. saying like, and then most of the time if they're not if they're not excited it's like a little bit looser 
Like most girls, when they're excited, it's a little bit tighter. So it feels a little bit better. Mm. Interesting. Dr. Luigi. <laughs> yeah, no, it's <laughs> interesting. Why, you ever notice next time you're you're having sex with guys or girls or whatever? I'll tell, I'll tell her to <laughs> <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys or girls. Um, I'll tell no, them to just, try not be interested. No, but feel it right before they right before they come. It just gets a little bit tighter. Yeah, well, I a think, little I bit think more. that's because they're orgasming, so they're yeah, yeah, yeah that's a biological yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as they like as they're getting close, it gets it gets tighter yeah, and no, tighter I, and tighter. And then once they're on done, it, they're they're relaxed, so it gets a little yes. bit looser. Yes, but I think during intercourse, though, I don't think that. Wow, this guy went mad side today. I don't during I don't, intercourse. No, while they're excited, it's still it's not as tight when they're orgasming, but it's it's still tight. That's interesting. Once they're relaxed, it's a little bit looser. That's interesting. I gotta look that up. Terrence? Got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, the, the, the girl has to be in it, man. And I think. I've done a lot of research. I've had sex I like think four the same. Times. I think the same is for like guys, too. Like, I think a guy is either just gonna go down on a girl because like it's part of the routine, or the guy's gonna go down on the girl because he's just a dude that likes to please a girl or, orally. You know I love saying? doing that, but oh, if I it think doesn't there's definitely room for It's the both, opposite. <laughs> 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 when a woman becomes aroused her, aroused, her vagina expands and lengthens, releasing a natural lubricant. All these changes help the woman's vagina prepare for penetration. If not sufficiently aroused, the vagina may not expand or be lubricated enough, which can cause discomfort, pain, and general feeling of being too tight. You read, that, so, you read that like a tight vagina, like so uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Damn. The words are so small. They are so small. <laughs> they are so small. So small. <laughs> they they are, like to, to your defense, they are mad. They're small. like abnormally small. Yeah, what is that? A PDF yeah, I file? Didn't, dude? I, didn't, I didn't click the link. It was just like a yeah. quick like Google at the top. Yep. Yeah, so care, to, care to uh, comment, Luigi? They're wrong. They're <laughs> <laughs> I know what I felt in there. I know what my reader feels. No, Wiener. not even what that. Good like, word. Even your Wiener. fingers, you could feel them like getting tighter. Yeah, but you. you I think you're saying what you're saying. Like, well, like they were saying, like it's contracting when like, they're about to. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. But like during that whole time, that you know, two and a half, three minutes, it's. Oh, what whoa, the hell? Whoa. What are you breaking fucking world what are you records running a over fucking there? Marathon? Yeah, what are you fucking Ron Jeremy. All right, that's <laughs> it's the power to be, baby. <laughs> Even with that, it's still the power to be. Yeah, twenty-two oh. seconds is. That's my <laughs> Jesus, dude. I feel bad for guys like that who have like. Ejaculation problems, yeah, or like, dude, it's not a problem. Micro dicks, it is a problem. No, it's uh, their problem, dude. Yo, there's a, a there's a <laughs> there's this comedian from back in the day. Uh, this guy Robert Schimmel, R.I.P. But he had a whole rest, skit rest about that. Rest in power. Yeah, he had a whole skit about that where he's like talking about his wife, saying like, "Robert, I think you, I think you suffer from premature ejaculation." He's like, "Suffer?" He's like, "What do you think? Those are tears all over your belly?" Oh <laughs> <God>. <laughs> That's funny shit. That's good. Yeah, I feel bad for guys though, man. Like that really sucks. Yeah, like what if you got a like literally like the micro dicks? Like there's nothing you can do about that. Ever. That's a genetic roll of the dice Bro, and it came up snake eyes for you. That sucks. That you can get a bigger one. I don't know if it works like that, dude. Yeah, but it won't work. It'll yeah. just be like a Yeah, like dude, yeah. dick implants are not bigger. like the same as you know fake tits. You know what I'm saying? Like women with like small tits can go get. You're fake gonna tits. tell me if you have a fucking micro dick, you're not gonna try and. I don't know, dude. Like, what if you fucking butcher it? Mm -hmm. There's a lot more. There's a lot more. The dick is a lot more complex than than tits. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you get a dick implant, but it's about your blood flow to your dick that's making it big or small. So you just make it hard 24 seven. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, it's not just blood flow. It's not just blood flow though. There's got to be a certain amount of like flesh that to expand. Yeah, where is it coming from? What I'm saying is, if they can do. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, this is insane. It comes from your ass. They just draw. It's just like, I don't know, dude. It comes from the, it comes the, skin, out of the skin on your head starts getting tired. You're like, oh, man. Where is it coming from? It's like the Power Rangers when they all, like, unite and turn into, like, the big fucking, like, Power Ranger thing. Oh, Transformers. Oh, Transformers. My bad. That's so funny. No, but it's Power Rangers too. For like Power Rangers, yeah. like all six of them or five of them, whatever, seven, they all got together and like I one, one I big I didn't watch Power Rangers. Okay, thank you. Power fucking thing. But if they can <laughs> give a girl a dick, <laughs> how can they not give you a bigger one? They probably could. They probably could. It's just not I just feel be. like it's a roll of the dice. You know I feel what like, like a lot more people would be doing it if they could give you a bigger I'd one. Rather, I'd rather deal with the devil I know than the devil I don't know. I walked in, so I opened the shower door on a guy who... I he's always pissed off and always preaching about stuff and he's so mad all the time and I open the shower door and I see the micro penis and it all just made sense of why he's like how he yeah. is and it was like holy shit 
I feel bad for this guy. Yo, it's That's really, sad, it's kind of sad, bro. Like, like there's, sad. Yeah. Yeah, dude, what about, like, there's legitimately dudes out there who got bad genetic rolls of the dice not just like with small dicks but they just like they're just ugly yeah and it's like, like think about that, that sucks yeah. <laughs> there's not a whole lot you can do about no. that well, I don't know never had that problem would you guys rather be super ugly with a huge dick or good looking with a micro dick <sighs> ugly, with, ugly with a huge dick yeah, because yeah, you could just hang it out. You could just hang it out there, like you're saying, like someone's yeah. gonna fuck you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also too, like you see a lot of these women, man, like they're with guys that are like the weirdest looking dudes. They got, they literally got a 12 year old. Body I have a friend, and they're hung, and it's just like, okay, yeah, well, I'm just like having sex with the dick. So I think I would rather be ugly. Gator, we call him. And how ugly are you talking about, though? Like, what's ugly? Uh, me, like Terrence, like me. Nice, nice. Luigi, yeah. you're hot. Um, Appreciate that, my guy. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> that's like, ter- that like a Terrence line right I, there. Well, that's why I said it. I'm like, <laughs> that's something Terrence would say. I appreciate that, my it guy. It sounded like natural, though. It, it, did. it didn't sound it did. for- it, it was a little bit of pause because I was trying to think of something you would say. <laughs> but I, I think I, I, think I got it. it like- That was a good one. With he a little, was like, I appreciate little less pause. He's like, I appreciate that. I'm trying to think of guy. like a celebrity or something that we could, that's like- Like Pete Davidson? Not good job. Yeah, that guy's ugly as fuck. I know, but look, he got fucking Ariel Well, Grande. supposedly he, he has he some money. Was, supposedly he's packing heat too. Yeah, yeah, but he said that's a lie. He was on. He was. He, he went on Megan the Fox? No. no, he's uh, no, Kim that's, Kardashian. That's M, uh, Machine Gun Kelly. No. Oh. See, like he's not a bad looking dude, Machine Gun Kelly. Nah, he just no. dresses weird as fuck. That's fine. Yeah. That makes him ugly. No, it doesn't. Yo, people were makes trying him to a bad act, dresser. People were trying to act like Eminem like killed him, and that's why he switched genres. But it's like no, like the hip hop genre is so diluted. But no one's making like pop punk music anymore, and yeah. there's still a huge demographic of people that love that shit. Yep. So we switched over. Like, would you rather compete with like a million rappers or compete with like only a handful of people making like that kind of yeah, like 100%. that rock music? Like, yeah, it was I think he sucks move. at both of those genres. <laughs> I, so. I don't, know, dude, I don't got, he's that bad. He's yeah. got he's got fucking. A lot of streams, dude. Yeah, he got he got some bangers. Yeah, there's a lot of idiots. But again, like Someone, they grow on, they grow on you though. Like I thought it was really cheesy at first, and then where's it come from though? Grow. I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but like, look at that guy. What's his name? Pete Davis. Be- Pete Davidson. Davidson. Like he is one of the ugliest people I've ever seen in my life. I know, but his but he's so funny. His personality. Well, it's, yeah, it's like we were talking about previously. Like dudes that are ugly can kind of make things up with the gift of gab, a good yeah. personality, Which and shit like that. Yeah, like, but that's good. Like if like you're in school, you're working with somebody. Like he didn't work with Ariana, Ariana Grande. No, but he's obviously he's in that. come across them and been able to say things yeah, and say the, the right thing. You know? But it also helps because he's also already established. They know who he is. Like, I think we were talking about this last time. Like, if you're some ugly rich dude and you walk into a bar where nobody knows who you are, you're probably not getting laid. But if you walk into somewhere where you're ugly but people already know who you are and you you have a good rep and you're established, you're going to be that much more attractive to yeah. them off the bat. Yeah, and I also believe, too, there's an ass for every seat. Yeah. You know, so I feel like I feel like no matter what you look like, you're always gonna have a girl. Maybe some guys get more girls off the bat, but I think eventually you're but gonna the, find somebody. But people yeah. say, but people say because he's rich, but he doesn't have anywhere near the money that like a Kim Kardashian or an Ariana Grande has. Like he, he's he, got status though. Yeah, yeah, no, he's got yeah because he, he's like he's funny, but yeah, the status is there. I agree, but like he's still in that space. They're not after him for his money, is what I'm saying. No, no but he has enough got, money to money. be in in with them, in with like them. in the crowd. Yeah, right. he has the status, so like he's, maybe he's just really good at sex, and they all kind of talk. Like say like D Rock's theory, maybe who knows? They maybe. all talked about it and they're like, "Wow, all right, he's done with her. I'm going." Maybe. What do you got? Yo, running? real quick. Uh, has any do have? Uh, can't speak to that. That's all right. Have any That's of right. you been to the karaoke place in Center Reach? KTV. No. 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 I fucking right. hate karaoke. Well, th- well, then thank you to whoever put our sticker out there because someone just texted me that there's a Remy Fit, Jason Tits, and Breathe sticker. At the karaoke place in Center Reach. Cool. Oh, tell nice. them to take it down. Fuck karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I hate karaoke, dude. D- I D- hate rocks going for karaoke next job today. so much. There's no, like, I don't, first of all, every karaoke song is a song I already don't like. And then I don't want to hear somebody that can't sing, sing a song I don't like. Yeah, because people who normally do karaoke can't sing. Yeah. You never it's get fun- sing. Yeah. It's funny. And better you're never like, oh, wow, that person's really good. Yeah, no. You get, that's like a rare rare breed where you're like yeah. oh man this guy's a performer yeah when they're, when they're good it sucks like I'm like <laughs> we go out for karaoke I'm like Taylor has a nice singing voice I'm like I don't want to hear you fucking sing <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear the worst fucking singer possible yeah yeah I'm not a big karaoke guy there's just like karaoke cool. actually means it's Japanese for off key oh really yeah oh look at that so it is meant for people who can't sing yeah 
That's what karaoke Dude, means. it's funny. Karaoke. It's funny. And you get like, I don't know, you get anxious because like you, you, don't, you know you have a shitty singing voice. So like in front of a bunch of like strangers and stuff. There's a karaoke place. It's actually like a wild bar. They have like uh, Nintendo 64 and GameCube and shit and like oh, all damn. these little TVs. So like you could play video games, drink, and then there's karaoke like six days a week really <laughs> and they have Where's a stage they have a stage in the back it's called the lizard lounge in bohemia right by uh me farms the lizard lot lizards at the corner yeah a lot of lizards at the corner that's f- so funny they came up again <laughs> um it's like right on uh sunrise in between ocean and locust oh, that's cool yeah those old gaming uh systems are pretty dope yeah i, I kind of want to check out standard rec because the food's like good and like i think they have games and shit there like they I, f- do. I feel like that'd be a cool place they to have hang like out. Uh, street fighter the arcade game and they shit. got like um skee ball whatever yeah, it's shit like, like pac-man and stuff yeah i used to love pac-man dude that was my shit taylor and i went to a straight up arcade that had we weren't drinking but um it was a straight up arcade that had a whole full bar and everything there's when, a place in we williamsburg it's called it's called barcade yeah it's yeah. Fucking, yeah they it's have cool, one of those man. in um uh, Philadelphia or somewhere over around there too. I remember when Mortal Kombat came out for the arcade, dude. That was like the shit. People would be lined up to play. You'd put like your quarter up on the screen. Be like, yo, I'm next. So it's you, my yeah, quarter. Yeah. yeah, dude. And then the guy, like, there would be like one kid there that would like be like playing like ten games in a row because he was just raiding, cheating, doing back, back, forward, flying across the screen. And Do shit. you remember the arcade they used to have in the Smith Haven Mall? Yes, that was the shit. Yeah, they just put another arcade in there. Did they? Yeah. Um, in the Smith Haven Mall? Yeah, where the food court is. How long until um, malls go out? They're starting to. Yeah. Right? I haven't been to it's the mall. It's starting to get... Sunrise Mall in Massapequa that's been there for like the fucking 30, 40 years. The, sun, the Sunvet Mall. Oh, is the it really? The Sunvet Mall, yeah. Has been yeah. Oh, Sunvet that's Mall's been, that's been, been terrible. Yeah, that's yeah, that's been just been dude, dude, I went Sunvet there. Mall Twitter is the funniest thing I've oh, ever seen. Really? Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's fucking great. I went in there the other day because I went to the get red wings it was like maybe yeah, a month yeah, ago that's where, yeah i went and got the red wings and i'm like yo let me just walk around the fucking mall it's depressing yeah it, yeah it, i mean you can you literally can only walk down the center to go to the bathroom like everything else is blocked off and there's a security guard sitting in the booth like sleeping i don't know what the <laughs> he's fuck dead. he's there for he's dead <laughs> <laughs> like he's there watching the bathroom i guess i don't know because there's no shops there's no merchandise in the there's place there's just that pizza place which i heard was really good it is is it's yeah, fucking awesome i heard that place is like amazing they used too many onions mark too right path mark no, no it's gone it's gone yeah, it's yeah. gone yeah that's yeah, a it's crazy dude. malls producer. i feel like malls are gonna be gone gone but that wasn't shortly. a mall like smith haven was or like the uh sunrise mall you know what i'm saying like yeah. that was like have you guys ever been in uh roosevelt yeah, it's nice. Mall? Yeah, that mall is huge, bro. Yeah. It's like you're in a fucking yeah. yeah they got valet mall. parking it's, and shit. Yeah, it's, it's a big crazy. mall. But yeah, really I, I, food I, there. I agree though. I think with like the internet shopping and shit like that, I think malls are eventually gonna go under. Yeah, unfortunately, definitely. I feel yeah, like I'm most places are gonna go. Yo, it's crazy to me how like like uh, this place over here, the fucking video game store on Main Street or or North Ocean ra- or South Ocean rather. Yep. Like, how the fuck does that stay in business? I know. Like, I know. comic book stores, like shit like that. How does it fucking stay in business? They got a vinyl record know. shop, dude. Yeah, that place, and it's big. Yeah. Dude, there's it's a huge. fucking vacuum repair shop on Main Street in fucking East Batchelk. Yeah, they have one in Satalka too. Like, R- yeah. R.A. the Rugged Man's dad owns it. For real? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, but where Airborne used to be, dude. Damn. Like, how, yeah, is that, how does in, that stay in business? Like, I don't know. Shit breaks, I just go buy a new one. Like, yeah. you know, nobody fucking... Yeah, it, people would still repair it. I know, but it's probably cheaper, though, to, to buy yeah, than yeah. to repair. Well, probably. You know? But you got the old school guineas that aren't going to fucking do that. No. They're going to go get it repaired. No, and if you, and if you pick up your vacuum <laughs> from, from Costco, you can return that shit at any time. Yeah. So that's what I do. I get the shark, dude. Fly around the, the house. The shark's great. Fly around the I house on the, the fucking gym. on the swagway, dude. Vacuum the house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I do it, bro. The swagway. Yeah, the hoverboards. Oh, the that's fuck? how he vacuums his house. Liar. I jump on that shit, dude. Lisa has videos. Call her. Oh uh, yeah, I want to see these videos. <laughs> you we're, see we're gonna put yeah. them on. Like on this Instagram. is boy who cried wolf shit right I'll, now. I'll, ha- I'll post them on Jits and Tiz podcast. No, I'll bring them up now. I'm not gonna call Lisa. She's sleeping. Dude, it's fucking 10 o'clock in the morning. It's 9.30. It's 9.30. She's not sleeping. She, it's her day off, dude. I'm not calling her at 9.30. All right. Send us the videos later. I will. As soon I'll, as she I'm going to po- post them on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, and tag them. Yeah, I'm going to tag you. All right. So that you look at it. Yo, so... Um, and I'm able to I'm able to put them on share. my story. Yeah, so <laughs> now now I know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, now he knows how to do it. Now you'll be able to share them. I learned that one. <laughs> so a little uh, get your weight up not your hate up today. Ooh. I got ooh, one. I got a good one. I got Nick one. Nick knows what it is. But. Um... So I think I think we already talked about this, but I, it happened to me this morning. So I just gotta bring it up. Fucking, I went to uh, Tim Hortons to get to get coffee this morning. Yep. And 
whatever it was like it was like five something and you know and change right so i give the kid a 10 and then i'm like oh shit i have a dollar bill so i give him the dollar bill and he's fucking sitting there like didn't you know didn't know what to do so i'm like yo it's, it's five and whatever the change was i told him and he's like yeah, yeah yeah so then he gives me all singles back i'm like dude i'm like i it's like I gave you that so you can give me a five dollar bill. You know, he's like, Oh, sorry. He's like, We don't have any five dollar bills. I'm like, So why the fuck wouldn't you just tell me that? You yeah. know, like that was the point of me giving you the, the fucking worst, dollar bill. Dude. And then he's like counting the change. And I'm like, Yo, it's, I think it was like 59 cents. And he's like, Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like, you know, the other guy comes over and he's like, Oh, what's the problem? I'm like, There's no problem. I'm like, I just need my change. I'm like, It's five dollars and whatever it was. So he gives me my, my five dollars. Right, and then he closes the drawer. I'm like, dude, my change. I'm like, I need five dollars plus change, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So he opens the door, you know, counting the change, and then the other guy, he's like, oh, he's like, uh, we have five dollars in that drawer, and he's like, opening this drawer. It's like oh, it was like a God. fucking nightmare. I'm like, dude, I'm like, just give just, me my fucking I change so I can go. Yeah, yeah, that is horrible. Yeah. Wait, but where are you paying five? What else did you get? I got a donut, bro. Oh, okay. I'm but like, see, where that, the fuck that, you paying five That's the before. problem, though, with like the technology and the cash registers. Like, Yo, they it's do like you're all retarded. The work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They do all the work, man. Like, <clears> when I worked at Tony's Pizza, it was we had to count back yes, change. Yes, yes. And it's like that's such a valuable skill that people. I almost wanted to say to the guy, like, dude, seriously, like, you don't fucking teach people how to count change. Or like, look at the kid and be like, you don't know how to. You're working you don't know how to do math. math. I mean, he looked like he was like fucking ten. Like don't he was like a young kid. Still, you do behind the register. I learned how to fucking. I learned how to do math in first grade. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, like it's really the establishment. Well, like what happens if you know the rest of it goes down yeah exactly it's, it's, like it's really the fucking the school's fault yeah well i mean yeah but. i mean because in all honesty man when i worked at tsby like i memorized all of the um prices to all of the the shit that we had in the menu mm -hmm. and people would give me money so you're for already it. thinking about it in your head well yeah i wouldn't ring them up i would just take their money but i would have to give them back change solid move yeah, I'd have to give him back change. Yeah. So it's like I had to think on the fly and be like, all right, it was, you know, four seventy five and you gave me ten bucks. Yeah. You know 525. what I'm saying? Five twenty five. Yeah. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like it's that <clears throat> when I worked at Tony's, like you take uh, the change, you round it up to the nearest dollar, and then you fucking seven seventy three. What do we got? What seven seventy three? Yeah, two, I gave you two, ten. Two twenty seven. Wow. That was fast, dude. That See, I can't that do math really, like that. that. Really good. I, I do it the retarded way. So if you give well, me, you had to learn the fucking retarded way because you had to do the yeah, um, you were in common core. Common core. Yeah. No, no. You, that was that was Dude, after your what? time. I thought it's not this that young. I worked on the yeah, grill. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, not that young. I never learned common core, but no, uh, I learned the retarded way where you were in the Pokemon though, right? What? No, I was. I mean, <laughs> when I was like, he had the pogs. When I was in like fucking kindergarten, maybe he had the pogs. He had the pogs. No, but like pogs no, were pogs cool, and man. slammers. I don't even know how to shit. play. I just collected them. I had a yin yang. <laughs> we we used to fucking play dice and bet with fucking uh, pogs, pogs and shit. That's yeah. awesome. That's what we did. We didn't actually play the pog game because it was more like you said, like we were collecting them. No, but I would count back. I mean, nobody cares anymore. We've moved Fuck on. Fuck you guys. <laughs> how would you? Count, wait, wait, I want to hear. How would you count back? So if it was like. Five twenty five, and they give you a ten. Right. So you you so I so if five twenty five, right? So I count back to four seventy five. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would get a quarter, Good right? Job, that's four fifty, right? Or whatever, three quarters. That's five. Yeah. And then five dollars. Yeah, that's what we said. That's yeah. yeah but, but I'm saying you were doing it in your head. I can't do that shit. Oh, okay. So you would I'm actually not, have to do I it. Actually you count have to back. Take yeah. Okay. Oh. But that's the way that you do it in your head, though. Yeah. You you do the change first, the nearest dollar, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like I actually have to physically do it. Gotcha. Like, I can't. Gotcha. I'm not, At least you got I'm it done. I just press the button. <laughs> the <Did you laughs> calculator button. Yeah, and this is the problem with America. D Rock has a calculator next to the register. He's like typing that shit in. <laughs> well, yo, that's what they did this morning on his phone. He's like fucking doing the th the thing. The the manager was doing this. Dude, let me tell you something I'm about like, let me tell you something about Tim Tim Hortons. Hortons and Hortons. Horton. Hortons. Hortons. I went there the other night for wait. Does Horton here who? What's yeah, that? That's Horton. This isn't yeah, just Tim Hortons. Every it's everywhere, but they're that Tim Hortons is even more egregious for what you're about to get into. Yeah, so I go do? no, I go oh, there no. last night and I'm like, yeah, let me get uh, let me get Spearmint Zin. The guy turns around and doesn't even read the Zins. He just gives me a blue one. I'm like, dude, that's cool, man. He's like, oh, I'm like Spearmint Zin. I'm like, it's a green. He bends over. He grabs citrus. Me, the he winter, grabs a light green. The winter green. Oh, the winter green. I'm like, dude, it's a light green. It's a light green. It says spearmint on it. I'm like, that's what I want. <laughs> Turns back around and he grabs another blue one. I'm like, dude, what don't you get? I'm like, it's the green one. And the guys at the donut spot are like laughing. And the guy behind the counter is like getting mad at me. He's like, but dude, like, green is green, blue is blue. 
Look at the fucking package. Dude, and it says the it's worst. Says it the worst too. Then, then there's the ne- the, ne- the next layer that where you're like, let me get a six of the spearmint oh, zin. The six, and they give you a three or, or no? Vice they'll give versa. you six zins. I'm like, no, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> six milligram. I'm like, it's a number on there. Or like, I'll go, and it's not it's not just Tim Hortons. It's everywhere. I'll be like, hey, let me get a you know a spearmint zin. And then I have to point it. I'm like, this one over there. Yeah. To the left. The, they go to the other they go side. To the right. I'm like, no, no. The other left. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's why they got to number it when you go in there. It's numbered. Like I I'll, feel I'll like get a number fifty four, and they know exactly which one to grab. Like they have everything numbered. Like all, oh, the, all the cigarettes, all the zins, Where all the bellows, or whatever. Just sometimes gas stations have that. Oh, that's the best I'm going to. That's, Dude, it's so so convenient. Yeah, well, it makes sense. They it do takes, it with the lotto. Yeah, yeah. The lotto scratch off. Exactly. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Yeah. You get scratch offs. These fucking. That's my what, what's eternal uh, get you in. What's your, what's your get you in? Uh, you hate up, Luigi. Um, well, well, we talked about it. Dude, I told you to well, remember. Now you're supposed oh. to talk about it, you <laughs> fucking bozo. No, he was supposed to remind me what other. No, it's these people who fucking do all this like nice shit um, just for Instagram. Like they go feed a bum or they fucking. Oh my God, oh, we were yeah. just talking Fake about Fake altruism. That. Yeah, yeah, like dude, you're not doing it to be fucking genuine. You're doing it for a fucking like. Clout, yeah. Shit, yeah. shut the fuck up, Greg. I, I hate that. If you really want to do it, like. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Don't put it on the internet. Yeah, yep. I, I hate that. I'm with you on that. I cannot stand when people go over today and help a man change his tire. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Just I know. The whole, the whole time that you change the tire, somebody's recording you. Yeah. yeah. It's like, dude, you can't even argue the fact that you're doing it for clout. You yeah. can't. Like, because yeah. if, if you weren't, you wouldn't have recorded it. You wouldn't have put it on yeah. Instagram. And maybe there's like two people out there out of the fucking millions that do it that are like, all right, I want people to see this. So maybe they. It inspires them to go do it. Yeah, like, yeah but great. then you should be Those doing that two, shit every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every day yeah. Those two people that do it for that reason, great, good for you. Yeah. The rest of you, go fuck yourself. Yep. Yeah, I was in Walgreens the other day, and uh, this older man came in. He was definitely like a little off. He was pretty homeless, and he had like these uh, EBT cards, yeah. right? That's what they're called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he wanted to get like a bottle of like Pepto Bismol or whatever, and that's all he was getting. So he goes to swipe the card. Something happened. The cash cashier helps him out, like turns the pad, swipes it. He's like, I'm sorry, there's no money on the card. And the guy's like, oh. He's like, all right, I'll come back with cash. And like before he like even took two steps, the guy in front of him was like, yo, yo. And he's like, I'll pay for it. And told the cashier, I got it. Walked, followed the guy, gave him his pep though, and paid for it. That's cool. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. That's so like he, didn't have a fo- he didn't have a phone recording him. And no. He, like, he, he did ask me, like, though. He like, did ask me, though. He asked me if I had a cell phone. He's like, yo, can you just get this for me? <laughs> <laughs> take a picture real quick. <laughs> yo, here's my app. Yo, they send this to me on Instagram so I can post this. But that's the shit you want to see, though. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. That and it, I and like. it is contagious. You do yeah. that in front of like a certain... And that's organic. That's yeah. authentic. That's not right. like, oh, hey, I, I, I can get some clout off of this. You right. know, like, it's fucking No, you're goofy. doing it to genuinely help the person out, which is great. But don't fucking put it on... Don't do it just for Instagram. You know... You know... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. You know? Go ahead. You know? You know? So... One day I was uh, I was driving to work and I saw a kid waiting um, at the bus stop and it was raining out. There's like a little puddle and you drove him to school. I drove no, I drove past. I drove through the and puddle. I saw, yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. I saw so I saw he kind of got splashed. So I felt bad. So I turned around. You know why he's like deciding what he needs to do. Like, should I go home and change or should I just get on the bus while I drive off? So while he was deciding. I turned around and drove through the bottle and splashed him again. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, damn, I should probably go while home now. While he was deciding if I need to go home, <laughs> let me make this decision easy for you. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to put that on Instagram, but, you know, I wasn't looking for that clout. No, I no that's, that's the, the kind of clout you should put on Instagram. <laughs> that's probably not the clout you want. <laughs> Dude, I've done that. That's before. a fake story, by the way. I've, and I've actually done that before. <laughs> I've seen I've seen kids walking on the side of the road when I was like just driving, like eighteen. Oh yeah, when you first start driving, yeah, yeah. fucking hit the puddle. Yeah, hit the puddle, then go back, hit him with the fucking piss that's in the super soaker. Oh damn, oh, dude, yeah, that, that was Halloween. Nah, that was like every day. That was every day for Luigi. That was every day in Levittown for Luigi. Shit, Hicks- Hicks- Levittown, yeah. Hicks- Luigi. Hicks- <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yo, they used to do that shit on Halloween for real. They used to put piss in super. We soakers. used to do that. Air and water we balloons used to do that. every That's Friday. So fucked up. So fucked up. Someone's like, you get someone's eyebrows off. And they look dude. like a fucking vampire. <laughs> <laughs> a vampire. Dude. Vampires don't have eyebrows. Most of them don't. Really? I never picked up on that. Yeah. Is that a? Can we Google that? Is that a real thing? No, I think. Do you think they vampires' wear, ears clean themselves too? Definitely. Probably. Dude. No, vampires on shows they have like a like it looks like their eyebrow region is like bumped out more. Yeah, like does, almost like does their, does their face clean their eyebrows for them? 
Mm. I think their eyebrows clean their eyebrows for them. Is that why they're all gone? Yeah, they're, they're always working because they're flying, dude. So they're getting so much shit in their eyebrows. Speaking but of what eyebrows, do you want, what do you want eyebrows there to stop the dust from getting in your eyes? That's what your flying? eyelashes are for. Yeah, but isn't that the first layer of the fence? It's no, like, your yeah, eyebrow, the eyebrows keep the first front of your sweat. head, your front of your head warm. It's like the the strongest part. Oh, of your brain. sweat's a good so point too. Like to keep the sweat I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Just so everyone's listening. I'm lying about the eyebrows. Hair's such a weird thing. Yeah, like it's such a weird thing. You have hair on your eyes. I think on Remy Remy's idea makes sense to stop sweat from it rolling into your eyes. Rolling into your eyes. Yeah. I was thinking like, what is I the function get, of eyebrows? I still get sweat in my eyes. Yeah, I know, but yeah. it slows it down. And I got some, I got some bushy boys, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Google yeah. it. I got some caterpillars that are chilling above my eyes. These things are big, dude. Yeah. I got to get my, yeah. I got to get these things trimmed, dude. Or oh, they get yeah. bushy. Sweat. Yo, what's the deal with that? The older you get, the, your hair gets wild, man. Like I got hair grown in, like. I get hair hairs growing on my ears now. Yeah, me that, like, too. I never I hate what it. the fuck? My ears got all fuzzy. I think as you get I older, your body's just like, yo, we need to protect you more. Yeah. That's you get, weird. You get fragile I remember when I first, like, really started getting gray, I started to get nervous. I'm like, this is like, my body's like, all right, what do we do? Am I dying? Col- yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we color his dying. hair? We put resources into keeping his hair color or keeping him alive? You know? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's what Remy said, to keep, to keep sweat, sweat and, like, precipitation. That's cool. It draws them away. The way they grow, it's like they kind—they're of, almost like gutters for your eyes. Around your eyes. That's so cool. what is what is facial hair? I guess to keep you warm, protect your face. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. You know, it is a layer of protection. Your beard. You yeah. Know, oh yeah. yeah. They said I remember reading some study about beards, like that. Uh, men with beards uh, have less. Um, sex. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> way more sex. sex. Less sex. No, there's uh, you get like less um, sun poisoning. Like it keeps your mm-hmm. it keeps your skin, yeah. um, like and it keeps the collagen in your in your face a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a layer of protection. It's good for like in the woods too. Like if you think about like that's why deer can can like run through like brush and shit like that is because their their hair, you know, their fur. And like if it's like a thorn, like it'll it won't get stuck in the hair. It'll just go right through. That's cool. Yeah, that you makes know? sense. And it won't like like you ever walk through a thorn bush and it sticks into your fucking skin. Yeah, and it's like terrible. <laughs> Well, like if you had if you had hair, it just goes like right through like a comb. Yeah, you know? I I wonder sometimes like, you know, after getting a haircut, I always like I'll think about like how weird we would all look if we just never got a haircut. Yeah, if we never like if we just couldn't, you know, you didn't shave or didn't cu- cut your hair, like how much uglier we would all. Dude, be. I'm picturing Dave with long hair right now, and it's hilarious. <laughs> like Lieutenant Dan hair, <laughs> like, oh, the, dude, like the Duck Dynasty long. boys. My hair's getting there. It's not the middle of my head, but it's getting there, Nick. Oh, no, it's not the middle of your head. He's like, yo, my head is long, bro. It's like to the middle of my head. I'm like, no. He like pulls it back. It's like just to the crown of his head. He's like, it was longer. It was a lot longer. Yo, but I did want to shout out Ryan Williams. Homie um, had an art show this weekend. I know he listens to the podcast and shit. Yeah, yeah, he supports us a lot he with does. the stickers, giving he, him the bums and he shit. Got, he got the, uh, the intro for us. He did. He worked he did. hard. That was, that was a... A gem that he got. Yeah, the guy was pounding the pavement out in the city Making while working. Cowboy. Yeah, and he like put stickers up all over the city. He like always filmed it. We got good content from him. And he went to the Nike Cowboy, slapped two sticks on the nips, and uh, had the guy sing about us. And now that's the intro. So big shout out to Ryan. His art show was good this weekend too. Man, he had a good turnout. A lot of people came. Yeah. I saw him talking a lot about his. A artwork. lot of still hanging up too. We're looking at it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll be up for a little bit, I think. So if Dan- anybody wanted to buy it, come Danny down to Island Yeah, I yeah. like that. The, the what was like a Grim Reaper? It like was smoking? it was called the um, Reefer Reaper. Reefer Reaper. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Dude, I was honestly thinking about buying me? that one too. I was yeah. I was in the bathroom and like, and I turned around, and I saw it, I'm like, damn, I'm like. Do I buy this? That right one. Now? That one was a gem. I was literally thinking about it. I come out to the to sit down. Danny goes to the bathroom and comes back with the fucking thing. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not buying it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was it was dope, man. He made a he made a drawing of me, a painting, whatever. I was a I think I'm a spider <laughs> yeah. or a tarantula or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. That he, is a spider. He gave it to me it, at first. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, well, what am I doing? And then the more I look at it, because I actually did get a frame for it, and <laughs> The more I look at it, I'm like, the thing's really grown on me. Like, it's actually... This is art. It's oil checking, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's like, it oil, oil checking. Oil checking, like... Um, Another spider. It, yeah. Well, when he first put on Instagram, he tagged Remy. So I was like, what am I... Like, am I oil checking Remy? Like, why... Yeah, why that is to me? <laughs> but, he tagged everyone. Yeah, he no, did. he tagged me, you... Me. He didn't tag you on that one. I it was like me, you, and... Um, some jujitsu page that like 
I, I don't even follow or anything. It was like, it was the weirdest fucking thing. But that's why I thought for the longest time I was oil checking you in that picture. <laughs> Thankfully, you're not. Um, but no, that picture, it could ruin Yo, this, butter, nice picture. this butterfly, where is it? Over there. The one, yeah. It's yeah, still a butterfly one. He does too. Some, the does. tattoo flash stuff. I like, he, I like whatever style. Flash. It's flash. Flash. Yeah, it's right, like traditional that's flash. Style. Watercolor. It looks, yeah. Yeah. You I think it looks. A lot of the sick. flash tattoos that he has on him, he drew himself. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he drew him himself, and he had. Um, I think he was down in Texas or wherever, like some one of the southern states, and he had the art. The tattoo guy was putting his art on him. That's cool. That's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, he did. He did a good job here, man. He was like talking to a lot of people. A lot of these these uh, paintings and shit even, have even a lot his of stickers have a lot of stories. Some of his stickers that look dope. Yeah, like when he, you know, when he. But even the artwork has stories behind it. Like he has some really wild stories. I think one painting in the back is like his family. So, the crushed Oreos. The crushed Oreo one. Was I like that funny. he goes hard on the freedom thing too, man. Yeah, I, I really I like yeah. that. You know, he made he's made Stay some cool free. like yeah he's made some cool like pieces in regard to. You know, freedom and like this whole COVID shit. So I, I love that. Yeah, the stickers. He came my out favorite with thing is signs. his video with Nick when you were sitting over here with the sticker. With the sticker. Oh, yeah, sticker. yeah. That, that's my favorite video. He wasn't here. liking me that much <laughs> that day. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, if you want to go check out his Instagram too, I think it's uh, Rye Rye Will Red Pill Rye Will Red Pill. Yeah, Red Pill Rye Will. Yeah, go it's check underscores him out. though. Red underscore pill underscore. Right. Rye underscore Will, I yeah, think. Yeah, so, yeah. something correct. like that. Yeah, and then like I said, oh, if we'll, you guys, we'll put a post up on Instagram yeah. with his art and shit. Yep, and there'll be a video out. I made him a little edit too. Yeah, it came out up, dope. Up I, think he's, I think he's going to be really excited yeah. about that. Really cool. Yeah, there was a ton of people in here. We had some heroes, yeah, some salads. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would buy one. I just don't have anywhere to put it. Like, yeah, you know, hang it from your rearview mirror. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> Yo, that's actually not a bad idea. Like, make like artistic. Uh, it's illegal. Car, yeah, it is. You're uh, not even supposed to have air fresheners. I know. I know. I'm saying, but like, it's not a bad idea to make like an artistic air freshener like that. Like, it's not. You get that a new, pee, a new a piece that hangs every. That's smart. Every like month. draw, draw on the trees. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I, I would do it if I could draw, but I can't draw. Dude. I, can't I can't draw can't shit. shit. I don't have draw. any artistic talent yeah. whatsoever. Yo, this, yo, he should start. He should look into making NFTs. I, I think, I think they, were, they were having that. a conversation with him about it that night. I think Gio I was telling him. I feel him like that. I feel like some of those the like smiley faces could be some crazy NFTs. Like yeah. you know how they just like transform or yo that one who sent it in the group chat that was crazy of Rogan's. That thing no. was nuts where was they were it? zooming out. It's yeah, like it was, it was like, like zoom- fractal. I thought that was Ro- I thought that was Rogan. Yeah, it was Is Rogan. It? Rogan oh, put oh. the post up. It wasn't It wasn't his NFT. It wasn't oh. his no, NFT, yeah. But, but yeah, you just like it keeps like zooming out and it's like a different Yeah. Like yeah, it was like setting. monsters like fighting. Then you zoom out. It was like in somebody's mouth, and then like you zoom out, and it's a face. Yeah, you and zoom. Then, it's like, a ship. It's, it's like going out of somebody's eye, and then it's like inside of a nose, and you zoom out. It's yeah, like, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah that, that's pretty cool. Speaking of NFTs, me and Nick were talking about this the other night. It's like we got to make one. I mean, I'm not against that, but I just the NFT thing. I feel like is n- way less about the art. It's more about people trying to capitalize on it like doing nothing really yeah like it's kind of like what happened with like bitcoin it's like people, a, quick bu- a quick buck yeah they're just trying to turn it into a quick buck yeah. and i feel like well, a lot of the nfts are not just a drawing like you get something with it you get to be in this specific club like the um like the ape nft you could go they have it's basically an invitation for you to be on like a yacht party or like you you could you could join these groups of people and you know then you invest in something with those people it's not just oh i'm buying a piece of art you're buying a part of a of a group a lot of them are like that and i mean not all of them some of them are just art so it's you spend 30 grand on this goofy drawing you get to go on a yacht and with these people that's what it it's is like, you're yeah, basically it's in a like, yacht club yeah right like how you, like you join, you pay two hundred fifty grand a year to be part of a golf club. Right, right. It's the same thing, but like that's that's Why your is, invitation. I, I heard that the NFTs just, are also not going to be like like um, the art is like the first level of NFT. You know, then they're going to start using NFTs for like different things, like for contracts and stuff, because it's always going to be like. Um, Unique, so you can't alter it. Yeah, that's basically yeah. Yes. what it is. But it's, it's a also contract gonna, it's to be a, in that place. It's also going to always be like like on online. Like if me and you sign a contract, like we could rip it up and fucking throw it away. Right, right, right. You know, if we sign a contract through NFTs or however that looks, whatever 
Yeah, it's yeah, on the, block, it's sense. On the blockchain and it's not that going makes sense anywhere. to me. I think that's a good idea. Right, but they were saying that like this was just the easiest way to like roll that out. Okay, because people to buy art and then it's like art is on the NFT. Okay. but like I said, they're they're looking at making it for you know hundreds of different reasons. You know. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. But like when Nick, <clears throat> me and Nick were talking about this, and we were talking about how people are a lot of people are buying it for to flip. And well, that and for the metaverse, yeah. right? Like they're buying this digital art to put in their digital real estate spaces, and it's like, I feel like that's kind of be. Dude, we should open up a a kava bar in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> Great ideas flowing today, guys. Oh Great God. ideas, yeah. dude. I don't think I'm gonna get. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be any part of the metaverse. No, I don't think so. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to pop off in our time. I think I'm going to no. be CEO. Of can you a choose the bar? size of your dick in the metaverse? Yeah, you could do a lot in the metaverse. You probably can. I just think that the, by the time the metaverse like really is like bumping, we're going to be long gone. I yeah. think that we might start seeing no. like, I, yeah, no, I think I, it's no here. Shot. I think it's here. No, no. I think it's I almost sh- here. He- hear me out. I think that we're going to see people spending time in the metaverse, but it's not going to be. Yeah, full. maybe if it's not, maybe not full time. I right. don't know, man, because like. It, Think about this, man. Like the rate of at which technology has accelerated just in our lifetime. Yeah, dude. Look, yeah. We were just talking phone. about. No, we, no, we watched the birth and death of a technology in DVDs and Blu-rays inside of the space of ten years. Right, but this it is became th- completely obsolete. But this is the thing, though. So, like, you say, look, look at your cell phone and stuff like that. We still have time in the real world i'm talking about full-blown people spending their entire days yeah maybe in, that in the metaverse I don't that, know, dude think about how many kids right now spend the entire day on fucking on yeah video right. xbox right and, and we're games. not going to be those kids because we lived and grew we're up not in the, but yeah, like, we're not but our kids kids are going to be that way. i know but that's what i've been trying to say I've been trying to say yeah, that we're, we're still, still going to be, be alive. Here. We're not going to be in the metaverse. We're not going to spend. We're not, I thought not you were saying there. we're going to be dead. Like we're not going to see it in our lifetime. No, I'm just saying that we never are going. Oh to, no, yeah, we're not going to oh, physically th- be in there. Right. This is why. No. This is I what our grandkids are going to be. Th- this is why it was hard to follow me because you kept cutting me off, motherfuckers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Every time I went to explain myself, I just think that in our lifetime we are never going to transition over to being like full us blown. personally. Yeah, because yeah. we we don't have that. And I think a lot but of even if. It even if it, even if we had to, I would never. Yeah, you're not going to have to. It's That's not. It's saying, not going like, to. We're not going to lose all means of reality in yeah. our lifetime. We're not. And I think that there are going to be kids. Yeah, there'll be kids that are born in 20 years from now that are going to spend predominantly most of their time in the metaverse. But us, our generation, the generation before and after, they're not going to. Not. I feel like even kids that are in kindergarten right now are going to be their whole lives are going to be in the metaverse. It could, but they're still going to have that time of being out in the real world. You're going to have kids that enjoy the sports, enjoy the real know. life, enjoy you know girls and real life. And then you're going to have those kids who are like bullied, who don't feel superior in the real world, that they will spend their time. I don't know because like if like I said I think I said this last week like I I feel like I was the last generation who really spent time outdoors like you know playing and shit like that yeah if you look at my brother like his whole generation like their wrestling team like me and my wrestling team like we used to go out like do things hang out go to parties chill my brother's wrestling team yo hop on Call of Duty after practice like that's what it was yeah like every single practice every single day after practice they're just playing Call of Duty wow it's like now I mean, I don't know. I th- I feel like most kids nowadays are just going to go right into the metaverse. I don't think I they're even going to be in the. You know, the wrestling's going to be in the metaverse, right? Because it's they're COVID not even friendly, gonna, and yeah, I heard they're not even going to be like doing wrestling practice. They're just going to be on the metaverse wrestling each other on there. I did hear that there were studies of like the metaverse, and like they had people go in there for like twenty four hours straight, and like the, per- the the I guess the patients or whatever they were guinea pigs couldn't even handle. <laughs> They couldn't handle it. Like they got out and they had like extreme headaches for like days and like because well, it's completely yeah, unnatural. It, but yeah. once you, if you're born into that, you're it's natural to you and you're going to be able to spend not weeks really, in there. Not really. Your body is not. It, it doesn't have computer systems. Is not natural. You know. Yeah, but if you your body's going to naturally adapt to it, it'll adapt to it. But it's not natural for your body to be in a simulation twenty four seven. No, like laying there. Yeah, you're gonna get like bed sores and shit. Yeah, yeah like that's true. Too. Atrophy, and that's also another thing is like, so yeah, you're a kid. Say you're 16 years old, and you're you're in the metaverse 24 seven. That's gonna dramatically decrease your fucking your your life expectancy. You know, so it's like, what are you gonna live in the metaverse for what 10 years and then die because you're obese? You have fucking yeah. You know, it's like yeah. Well, I think I, mean, I think there's a lot of things that they're going to have to pan out though. I I could I could see it being like. 
somewhat okay if like the metaverse like if you're in the metaverse but you're walking on a treadmill you know mm. like something like that where it's you know, offsetting you're what you, just fucking what you were saying too there. though i feel like there's gonna there's pushes towards this type of technology where like your physical body is going to become irrelevant like you know you but can it, just but it, transfer going, your consciousness going into that though do you say that's possible by like right before we're about to die would you rather die naturally or would you rather have your die now your mind and your not your physical body but like like your consciousness your, your consciousness digital? in yeah become digital in the metaverse Oh, so, you kinda, so you kind of so you kind of go on forever. forever. Or that's, a, that's a Black Mirror one. That's yeah. a Black Mirror yeah. episode. Yeah. That I was, think I'd that rather was just a, die. That was really? a tough one. That I feel like it'd be kind of dope. I mean, I guess you could always like check out of that. No, uh, I don't think I, so. I don't I think don't I'd want to live forever, but I would want to live substantially longer, just because I, there's so many things that I would love to see. Yeah, experience. You know, like, yeah, yeah, see things experience. Like, um, I'd want to live forever. No, I don't. I wouldn't want to live forever. But I think how cool would it be to live for like a hundred? No, I'm talking like 500. Oh wow! You know, it's like think. All right, think about this. Like you know, me and you, Nick, we're almost we're almost 40, and it's like I feel like I, I was I was an idiot till I was 35. You know, like it's only now that I'm starting to like kind of like figure like shit out and get a hold of certain things, and then like you know, you finally get get that, and then you just your body starts physically deteriorating, and you're on the downslope. You know, like imagine. You can stay physically um, sharp, sharp, and mentally sharp for like a, a long time. How much shit you would learn? How much like how much better of a person you could become? Or I mean, or a shit bag too, obviously. Yeah. But like, I just feel like it would just be kind of cool to see. I yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Like that would definitely make a big point. But I don't know. I, I feel like even like now, like another sixty years, if my body wasn't gonna just like take a shit and just keep going on a decline, like. I'd like to live to 100. I yeah, think in 100, yeah. in 100 years, like in the 40 years that I've been on this planet, I've already seen a ton of shit. In 60 more yeah. years, like... Start doing well, that. Well, so so imagine you had... Imagine you had like imagine you could live like five fucking lifetimes. Like how much shit yeah. you, could, you could do. You know what I'm saying? Like you And you can... You could like... You'd be like the real life splinter. You can master so many <laughs> things. You know what I'm saying? Like you could... By the, by the time you're, you know, into your 400th year or something like that, you could fucking be, you know, a master of a lot of things. You could have lived several different crazy lives i you're, just think it would be pretty cool you're yoda teaching the young jedi knights yeah that's what i feel like like imagine having it. sometimes like you know if you have a conversation with like a, like an older cat and they they just like drop wisdom on you yeah you what know? about a dog imagine like having a conversation right now with somebody that's been alive for 400 years yeah, yeah. you know like how I, much shit I, like we were talking about this well you could just well, right, you're dead. But before we get into all this you're I, got, out. I gotta leave so peace out see you guys later peace love, dude bro, dude thank thank you. You. in a little bit have fun bro yeah like i definitely think that like uh, D Rock and I were talking about this. I feel like, I feel like I had somebody like I wish I had somebody like me when I was younger, where like uh, you have like an adult, somebody who's of experience, like giving you like tips and pointers and ways of living and shit like that. You know, yeah, imagine you're 500 years old and you get to do that for somebody. Yeah, or even you know? my age, man. Like I feel like 40 years and like some of these dudes that we train with are in like their early 20s, man. Like I've already lived double their life. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to think that way. And I wish that when I was 20, 23, I had somebody my age being like, yo, listen, man, start setting yourself up for this. Do this. Look into that. That's a good way to go. You know what yeah. I mean? What happened? Stop. Yes, it is. It stopped? What the fuck? No space. Are you serious? That's, what it says. That's insane. Well, wait. We're recording on here, though, right? Yeah, we're good. All right. We're good. Yeah, I just think it would be cool, man, Like the amount of shit you could learn with that time it would just be pretty cool and then just like the ability to see things you know what i mean like to see to see what this what we were just talking about like to see how the metaverse plays out you know what i mean yeah. to, to be a l around long enough to see how things play out you know because people always talk about that like you're always wondering about what things are going to be like 100 years from now like how cool would it be to be like you know if especially if we all made it we're like all right put put your bets down now and then like 100 years it's like ah you were wrong motherfucker yeah. it just you know well, I think about people like, you know, who right now are like passing away at 100 years old. It's like, damn, what? They saw so much shit in 100 years. They yeah. saw the first car, the first color TV. Yeah. They, they saw beepers, uh, pay phones, cell phones, internet. Right. You know, like it's insane. In 100 years, what you see. So in 500 years, you're right, dude. It would be. Yeah, it'd be crazy. You're going to see some shit. Yeah. You, know, and you, and you could have went, you know, if you were 500 now, you, you would have literally lived through. Horse and carriage, yeah. and fucking crazy, you know. 
world wars and like yeah you said the invention of cars and fucking planes and shit like that i think i oh, dude, this is what blows my mind i think it was actually on rogan the other day they were talking about how long did it take and from planes till they were dropping bombs out of planes yeah you know what i'm saying like the i think it was like less than 40 years before turn, turn that on dude I know it's crazy. Yeah, and that's what I mean about the rate of technology, man. It's insane. You know, like I said, we've we literally in the last 20 years and really could probably scale it down to about 10 to 12, like I said, we watched the like the birth and death of cutting edge technology. Yeah. It's insane. That's good. Um I don't know about you guys. I know Remy had to bounce or whatever, but since we're early, I'm I'm having a good time. Let's keep this bitch rolling. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying. Dude, uh, the other, I'm into it. No dizzy. On another note, the other day I was at work. We were setting steel, had a crane, and I'm up there, and they're like, Terry, watch your head. And I'm like, it's all right. You could kill me. And then the fucking operator clobbers me in the hard hat with the piece. I was like, yo, I was fucking kidding, bro. Oh, my God. You didn't actually have to hit me with it. <laughs> and, and what, the piece meaning like one of those I-beams? It wasn't a beam. It was like a big piece of angle. Like it, it was, uh, we call it diagonal bracing. Like it like strengthens it. makes it more oh, okay. rigid. So it goes from corner to corner. Yep. And yeah, I was I was up. I had to make the high side. And like it fucking just bumped me. It didn't hit me that hard, but it was so I was like, dude, I was fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we had this new kid in the seat. He's actually like a fucking hustler he really wanted to work for bay crane and he had a job somewhere else and the guy's like listen i don't really have anything for you right now he's like it's all right dude i'll work for free he's like i just want to get experience so the kid's been showing up to the they started paying him but like he was he wanted to work for the company so bad that like he gave up his other job and he was just coming in to learn and like run cranes i'm like that's badass bro to be to be that fucking hungry and like you know now he's got a job and then when you don't get too many people like that no especially today no just like the kid just wanted to work and he did a really good job that's awesome He's probably in a good position to do that, though. Yeah, he might still be living at home yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, Is Big Crane like one of the bigger? Yeah, yeah. Those things are insane too, bro. Those cranes that those guys drive are fucking Huge. insane. You ever see one of them fall? Yeah, yeah I've seen videos. Nasty. I've never seen I one of them. In s- real life. I was on a job site in Minneola. The fucking thing, the guy was driving the crane, but he forgot to put the outriggers either in or out or whatever, and he's going and he just starts tipping. God. He just missed the building we were doing by a foot, Holy and he just missed the building we were next to by like six inches. You saw this in real life? We like saw it went, happen. Oh yeah, my God, that's we so just, scary. We're like, we're up on the. It was like a six-story building, five, five or six-story building. We're up on like one of the top floors, and we just see the thing moving, and we're like, "Yo, that crane's moving fucking fast." We run over, and then before we even get to like the window, like the edge. You just felt the whole fucking ground shake. And then Damn. we look, we're like, holy shit. Dude, that could fuck you up. That could fuck the operator up because he's getting, he's not wearing a seatbelt. Like, no. the whole thing tips over. Like, yeah. you're fucking well, slamming he was, your head. Like, he you was might go, You might go through the windshield. He yeah. didn't get hurt or anything, but he uh he Probably just a little lumped up, bumped and bruised. Yeah. Yeah, that, I'm sure he was banged up, but that's scary, too. Yeah. If someone's on the ground, working the ground. Oh, my yeah. God. That's fucked up, dude. And it's it was like a middle. It was like a busy area. It's right near um, Winthrop Hospital. So it's yeah. It's packed. It's ton, tight over tons there. Tons of cars over there. It's like almost like Queens. Yeah. With like how how there's how buildings they, yeah. and houses everywhere. Dude, yeah, but that's the how close of construction deaths that happen in a year in America is like pretty high. Yeah, yeah that's it's crazy. crazy. I think forklifts are like crazy too people like die all the time well they knock like the rack like if they're in like a warehouse space they knock down like a shelf and the whole thing just collapse the whole thing like dominoes yeah that's a shitty way to go out dude i I seen a guy he was going to wipe down um something on like the seventh floor in brooklyn or queens he's going to wipe down something off a scaffold and he slips and he falls down seven stories and he just dropped dead oh Oh, like you you i didn't see him actually hit the ground but you heard him scream and you heard a lump you were on the site when this i was happened? on the site holy shit and you just heard you heard the scream and you heard a lump and then we all rushed over and we're like holy shit that's scary that's i remember scary. hearing back in the day i don't know exactly how true this is but like um supposedly when they were making the bridges people would die like when they were pouring the concrete like yeah people like full in them yeah and they can't stop it so like supposedly a bunch of people are like there's like Bodies, bodies in these in bridge there? yeah wow. like in the con- like the they can't stop they can't stop the poor so like if you're working and you fall yeah it just it is yeah, what it is and water is heavy and now you're getting cement poured on you oh dude you get crushed at the yeah. same time yeah that's fucked do you think like when you pass away like in situations like that do you think your body like converts over to some like 
like you're hallucinating. Do you think your body protects? So like the body's crazy. We talked about getting knocked out. Like Supposedly your body goes- that's what um, DMT is. They think that like when like these people that have these near death experiences, that your body like when you're about to die you get this like huge DMT rush and that's where these whole these ideas of like um, life flashing before your yeah, eyes where you're like deal. reliving your life or you're seeing somebody that's supposedly yeah it's supposedly like a mechanism of death yeah 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 that's crazy I always thought that like people who get caught in fire and shit and like they're just burning to death it's oh like gosh. you would think like their body would like take over and be like yeah you're not gonna suffer here's some fucking I DMT I mean I would hope so right it's like it just takes you to a different gallery. I mean place. it makes sense right cause like you know think about like Injuries where you get hurt and it's like you don't feel anything because that you're high on that adrenaline, right? And it doesn't hurt till later when the adrenaline wears off. You 100%. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's crazy because we've always talked about like the human body, man. Like we talk about getting knocked out, how like your body saves you from injuries by going limp. You know, we talk about the ear, how the ears is self cleaning body part self cleaning you know but like yeah that helps be, you not listen to women <laughs> yeah i mean that would be that would be insane i mean i guess it's i guess it's not out of the realm you know especially since it's, people yeah. say like oh my life flashed before my eyes and shit like that you know yeah and it's like so many people have had like such similar experiences you know right. what i mean like you hear these stories and they're all very very similar yeah i think it has to do with the the trauma though i think that like like if like you just like i don't know like if like your heart just stopped or like something just went wrong, I don't think necessarily would you see like your life flash before your eyes. I feel like it would have to be something like intense, like burning or getting piled up with cement or something where like your body's like Yeah, but did your body know the di- like your body just knows I think it's, it's dying. I think does it's it know mind. the difference? I think it's your mind. Well, the, I mean so, does your mind know the difference though? Like yeah, I think it knows that you're it, dying. It's well just no, gonna... I just think that I think that if you're put into like a life or death situation, like say you were being mauled by a cat, now all of a sudden all these hormones and dwarf everything's pumping out. I think that's like your brain's way of being like, all right, we're gonna fucking take you out of this shithole. But I think it's biological, though, is what it is. Yeah, like, but it's also, a, it's a biological response to whatever the stimulus is, right? Like, so, like, adrenaline. Adrenaline is a biological response. Like, something happened, your body gets the, these signals and sensors of pain, and if it reaches a th- certain threshold, the the adrenaline and the endorphins kick in. You know yeah, what so I mean? then it, like, w- it would have to be situational. Yeah, then. but what if you're... But I think... I think I think you're right to some degree, but what I, this is what I'm saying is like I think the DMT thing is an end of life thing biologically, where like you're gonna experience it no matter what, no matter what yeah. to some degree. But like you said, based on certain situations, it may be even more heightened. Right? You yeah, like saying? your adrenaline might be going. Like say you get mauled by a cat or whatever. But if you're dying of natural causes and you and your organs are failing, your body knows it's failing. It's gonna it's gonna protect you from that. Yeah, like I, I don't even know if it's a protection thing. I think I don't. I don't know that it's like. I don't know if that the whole DMT thing is a protection thing or just a biological response to death. Yeah, and I think what you're saying carries some weight too because like there's there's probably a certain part of it that is a protection thing based on like hey you know you're about to suffer some really super traumatic death yeah it's kicked into even higher gear maybe yeah. you know what i'm saying i feel like we've heard stories of people like passing away or like their heart stopping or something and it wasn't it wasn't dramatic and then like oh my god what was it like when you passed away for you know 12 seconds or whatever and it's like oh, i just i woke back up i didn't see anything i feel like i was sleeping you know, so I kind of feel like if it was something like dramatic, like a tiger ripping your face apart, or <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or like you fucking. I you, love that that was your fucking damn. first thing in your mind, or a like tiger uh, ripping your face, apart. or like you get fucking a uh, you know thirty tons of cement poured on you, like your body's starting to freak out. I feel like yeah, that's when shit probably start pumping through your veins. Well, the adrenaline's probably kicking in at yeah, that point. Exactly. I'm sure. I'm your sure body's, that your body's reacting to certain situations. Yeah. I'm sure that definitely has to play a part in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. The more intense the situation, maybe the more intense the reaction. It's, I, it would only make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's the that's the crazy thing about death is nobody fucking knows. Nobody knows. Nobody dude. knows. And that's why. And if you do know, you can't tell anybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why you're, you're never coming back to tell your story. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who tries Unless to tell you Jesus. otherwise is a fucking snake charmer, man. Snake charmer. You know, like that's. And we've talked about this a bunch of times. I feel like death is the one thing that like every human being kind of shares like an insecurity over right it's like no none of us know what happens after you die yeah. no so and, much like, uncertainty yeah nobody knows why we're here like everybody every single human being has probably shared that like what what like what is this you look up at the sky and you're like what the 
fuck where are we and what happens when you die and what's the reason for all this you know like and that's that's where i think the psychological like soil comes from like for religions and things like that because people want some type of comforting answer they want to know you know like what are these stupid things like oh if you see a dime it's a yeah. relative looking for you it's like yeah. no it's not yeah it is <laughs> my grandpa's always looking well, how'd they me. communicate before dimes i don't know he wasn't alive <laughs> you know then. i'm saying like it's He's just had a, dimes his whole life it's it's just a goofy story that people like to tell themselves because yeah, they want to feel better com- about this yeah, yeah it's a comfort thing it, it's, nah, it's my grandpa's weird. looking out. it's weird though because like i don't know if i told you i probably told you guys this story i don't know about on air or not but so when when my um when my good friend mike garifola passed away i went to go see a uh, a medium it's medium right yep and um i was like really skeptical i'm like this is a joke i was like 21 20 years old and um a medium for people who don't know are, are the person who gets to speak to the dead i'm more of a large on what i'm more of a large nice <laughs> so um <laughs> It's, they're not going to tell you like the lotto. They're not going to tell you winning numbers. They're not going to tell you the future or anything like that. They're not a psychic. So I went to this person in Levittown. I went to their house. And I, like I said, I was like super skeptical. And I walk in and we sit down at the table. And it was like me and like a couple other people. Wait, was this the uh, the lady? No, nah, it was a dude. Okay. Never mind. And um, the guy tells me like straight up like this is what I'm here for. Gives me the whole rundown of like his background and shit. And then goes, since we got that out of the way, he's like... Who is here for MG? This this person has not let me be since last night, since they found out that I was coming here today. Who is here for MG? And my buddy's name is Mike Garofola. Did you did you do anything prior? Like, did this before you see this person? Like, do they make you fill anything out? Do they, make, nope. they ask you certain questions? Nothing. Like, you nope. never met this guy before. Nothing. Nope. nope. I just do like do like mutual friends. We found out that you know this guy is a medium, and we went there. And did he, what, did what you came, give him what your came name or anything like that? Nope. No, we just showed up. We paid him cash for like it was like tip or whatever. We but always, like he he had no idea who you were before. Nope. Like he couldn't have researched. All right, this is Nick. He was friends with this guy. This guy just passed away. Nope. Oh, no like, questions. What he say, nothing. What did he say? What was MG trying to say? So he just wanted to know that like he was still around. Um, he gave, so basically he gave me a lot of situations that only him and I knew. Only you would know if like you were friends with this person. So he told me about a car crash. He's like, I saw a car crash, and I said, Yeah, he crashed his car. He was high and dope. He crashed his car. He told me he saw coins. When my buddy was doing heroin, he went to a house, robbed the house, and stole a bunch of exotic coins. So then him, you know, being an addict, was like, I got to cash these in. So he went to the bank. And then the cops reached out to all the banks and said, listen, keep an eye out for exotic coins. He went there to go fucking cash the coins in. Boom, he got arrested. He was sent to jail. Um, him and his, me, me and his parents, or at least his father and his sister, we were like beefing. There was some bullshit. It was like real like petty shit, but they were mad at me. I kind of was holding my grounds, and he's like, yo, he's like, you're not getting along with the family. He's like, you're right, though. You're right. And then Mike left, and he like, he, he like, he's like, yo, Mike's giving you a hug right now, and I never just gave Mike a dap. We didn't even dap. It was a hug. Like, we would just like kind of like grip each other up, hug. So I thought that was crazy. I had, I had a long sleeve shirt on. The guy couldn't see any of my tattoos that I had for Mike, nothing. Then he goes, somebody else is coming in. I see the initials JL. My mother's name is Janine Levesque. So now I'm like 20 years old, 21 years old, shitting my fucking pants. And I'm like, yo, this is like wild. Like Mike came through. So he says, JL. I didn't answer. He's like, I see water. Does this make any sense to anybody? I see water. I still didn't say anything. I grew up in Lindenhurst across the street from the canal. Literally, the house across the street, their backyard was the water. We used to play on the docks, fuck around in the water as a kid. I didn't say nothing. He's like, I see, I see this person with uh, pain by their heart. My mother had breast cancer, and then it moved to her bones, and that's how she passed away from bone cancer. So not only did he nail Mike Garofola, and didn't know anything about me and Mike, but he also didn't know about my mother, and my mother came through, and me being a fucking scared kid, I didn't say shit, and I let her go. Oh. So I don't know. There might be some shit to it. You know, it was just, it was a really bizarre situation. Dude. Yeah. It fucking, it freaked me out. I, I saw this, um, a documentary on that shit. And they like break down these people's like techniques on how they do these things. Um, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but dude, I, it's fucking possible. I'm, I'm, well, this, here's my thing, right? I'm caught, I'm caught in a weird spot, right? Because it goes, I don't it know. It goes against everything you believe. No, not even that, right? Like, so I'm just a skeptic by nature, right? Um, but 
I've always felt that there's a disconnect between these things and science. Like there should, I feel like science should have a way to look into these things and test these things, right? Because how you only know, we only know what we know, right? And like, so I'm, I'm skeptical by nature because it's like, well, how does this person know things that we don't know or whatever? And why is there this gift people have? And why can't it be, why can't it be really studied and tested scientifically, right? Um, so part of me discounts it, but then there's a part of me that's like, how arrogant is that? I don't know shit, man. I don't know anything. I have never, I've never died. Like, how can I discount that there are, the, the dead are still around? Like, there's no way to really know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, I think, I think there's skeptic, skepticism in like psychics who are going to tell you your future, right? Because it's very general. Yeah. But when you have somebody giving you specific situations, it's kind of like, I don't know. And listen, I've always been that way. I've always been kind of on the fence about ghosts and spirits and energy and shit like that. But I don't know. After that situation, man, like I said, that guy knew nothing about me and Mike. And then after that, he, he my mother came in. So it's kind of like, all right, so maybe like somehow somebody reached out to him and was like, yeah, I'm coming with a friend. His buddy just passed away. Whatever. Maybe something like that happened. But to have my mom come in afterwards, it was just kind of like, you know, is this shit real? Yeah. This is like the real deal, you know? I, I get it. I definitely get it. I just like, I guess you know what it is? If there wasn't so many hucksters, yes. like people that are fraudulent that pretend to be like this. They just uh, play on people's emotions. Yeah, like people yeah. go there wanting to believe yes. and then yeah. they, they like tug at their heartstrings and like they might do a little research. Oh, yeah. this person probably lost some. And research. there's a whole, there's a whole like slew of techniques that these people use. Like they ask certain leading questions that you don't even pick up on how they're drawing information out yeah, of you and like, shit like they're that. They're specialists. Yeah. Yeah, it's swindlers. But what he's saying with the initials and like shit like that, like that's pretty wild. Have that's you gone to anyone experience. else or just that one? Just that one. I'm surprised it didn't make you want to go back again, like knowing that you had an experience like that. I know, it, but then, but then, like what D Rock said, there's a lot of people out there that are fugazi, and, yeah. it's, and it's like, do I really want to waste my time? I got a good experience. It did give me some kind of feel, you know, like, hey, maybe they are still around, yeah. you know, or maybe they're not. Maybe that's they a went. Cool feeling. Maybe they went in peace. Maybe they yeah. were able to like let me know that they, you know, I'm doing the right thing. And so, what do you guys think? Like, let's let's remove the skepticism and and like keep that premise that like that's a real thing. Like, what? <laughs> what yeah, is that afterlife yeah like what i don't what is that like say that's you know do you have control over that like because like all right you had that experience and then other people don't like is there certain you have to die a certain way or have like unfinished business to be able to stick around and do these things or like what what is i don't know i don't know what, what, I mean? like, what, what makes that, what makes you different from somebody else or what makes that person passing away yeah. different than somebody else's family i don't member. know that's what i mean like what what uh so and this is another reason why i don't fully discount that stuff because there's there's all these ideas of like the multiverse right mm. and multi-dimensional things you know like there's all these dimensions and maybe it's literally just another dimension yeah and that's where they that's where all you know maybe not every person that died is in that particular dimension maybe if you're a medium there's only access to that one dimension and maybe like they're only in that dimension and that's the only way they can communicate with them. If they're in another dimension, they can't communicate with that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. who knows? Cause, and that's real shit. Like these, there, there's, there's scientific proof of, I, I think they said there's like 11 different dimensions now mm -hmm. and <clears throat> who knows? Maybe that's what it is. You know, you know what I, we got to do? We got to make like, I, it's got to be between just like two of us. I got to tell you, I'm going to, if, if I die first, I'm going to do this. If you die first, you're going to do that. Like some kind of sign. And then we like say a month from after you die, I see this certain sign. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe but this I is woke up in the morning and there was a double decker in my toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It definitely was D Rock. I'm going <laughs> to <give, laughs> give you guys all wet dreams. You think I'm a double, I'm <laughs> I'm a a double decker, decker kind of guy? Sleep. Double decker, dude. Wait, but, is, it, is it double decker or is it? Yeah, it is upper decker. Upper decker. decker, upper decker, decker. decker. Yeah. But like, what if, what if, say, what I was just saying is, is the case, right? Where I, if I'm not in, the particular dimension to be able to communicate with you, and then I can't do it. Right. Well, you know then, what I'm saying? Then we got to wait till I die and we do hopefully end else. up in the same dimension. Yeah, I don't just, know, man. It's, just, it's, just, it's just a strange, it's strange, dude. Because, like, there's other people too that have similar stories from mediums, you know? And I don't know, man. It's like, we, there's so much about this world that we don't know. You know, it's like, it's, uh, there's a lot of possibilities. I yeah. Mean, like you said, like, I agree. I don't discredit anything. Like, you know, 
the, the human body is insane. What we can do today is insane. The technology, what human bodies do. I mean, people are like get sick. They wind up being completely paralyzed, and then like months of like rehabilitation, they're able to walk and use body parts mm-hmm. again. It's like it's crazy. So you know? with that whole medium thing too, I remember um, reading the idea behind it is that supposedly like as a kid, like you're you're very open to those things. As a child, that like. I think it was another medium explaining it. He was saying that like you're, every person is born with it, but they lose it over time. Kind of like your imagination. Yeah, like the the longer you you live in in this world, and the way like you know you everybody's kind of pushed in a certain direction, you begin to lose that stuff. Like like Peter Pan, you know, like yeah. that whole Peter Pan story. Yeah. As when he grew up, you know, he lost that imagination and couldn't you know couldn't do it anymore. So it's like maybe there is something that maybe as a kid. You know, like, and that that bugs me out because you think about kids, you know, and their imaginary friends and this yeah. and that. And it's like that well, always just at, gets. Yeah, look at kids just staring up at the ceiling, like laughing and talking yeah. and yeah. talking to people. It's like, yo, is that you really just their imagination? Or yeah. well, like, even sometimes dogs do that. Yeah, you supposedly know? dogs um, pick up on shit like that. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you though, like with the imagination shit. When I was younger, I remember this one memory where I was in my house in Lindenhurst playing with two action figures, and I had the net that you would get oranges in remember that like you would get like six yeah, or seven yeah, oranges yeah, in yeah. That a little net. plastic net yeah yeah and i used to love that net. I would, I would use that net with my action heroes it'd be like you know a fucking net cargo net i would throw on one of them you get trapped yeah and i was on the edge of my couch and i was like literally fighting these two action figures and the one guy got punched and i let the guy fall off the couch and i'm telling you bro it switched i was seeing like a cliff he was falling past rock and like I remember being like, holy shit! Like I just did that, and that was a memory that stuck out till today. Like I could remember the couch; it was like a a threaded like brown and like dark brown colored couch. I was on the arm of the couch, dude. So yeah, as you get older, it's like you you kind of are trained not to have an imagination anymore. You know, oh, I want to be an astronaut. Nah, like you're just you don't think that way. You're never gonna be an astronaut. You're never gonna be like you know what I'm saying. Like adults train yeah. that out of you, and then as you get to be our age, it's like. You know, like that imagination is gone because of years and years yeah. of people just kind of like shooting down like your aspirations and your dreams and like yeah. shit like that. And as you get older, you know, you have less time to like, I like imagination and stuff like this kind of like a muscle. Yeah. You know what I mean? As you get older, you have less time to con- continue to exercise that muscle. Yeah, that's true too. You that's know? a great like, point. You, you get older, you got bills, you got this, you got that. It's like. Yeah, life's in the way, yeah. work's in the way. Remember like, I, I still think about this all the time when I see kids like. I miss how easy it is to like fascinate a kid. They can be fascinated by like the dumbest shit. Yeah. You know, where it's like, man, I miss that. Yeah. You know, like you give a kid a fucking, like, you know, everybody's, every parent or somebody's had this where like they buy this, they buy a kid a toy or whatever, and it's like they're more interested in playing with the box than yeah. the toy. Like, you yeah. know, they're making forts out of it. Exactly. Fucking, I was just about yeah. to say that you give a kid a bunch of pillows and fucking blankets and chairs, and like you put it over, and like now they have like something to go in, and it's like, this is the coolest thing. Can I bring yeah. a TV in here? Can I bring yeah. my Xbox in here? And you're like, yeah, sure, dude. Like, it's just a fucking yeah, chair with it, a blanket like. over it. But like, they're But to them, that's a fucking, yeah, that's a like, fort somewhere. Yeah, exactly, which is dope. So. Dude, things, speaking about action figures, I miss that, dude. I used to fucking love that. Yeah. Yo, I used to set up, I had a blanket that um, it had like a football field like laid out on it. Uh-huh. I used to set up like with the G.I. Joes, like a fucking whole football game and That's shit. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, so Remy Bounce to go to this tournament. How do you think he's going to do today? I think he'll do well. He's actually, he's got eight people in his bracket, which is like a nice like little size. Yeah. Moneybag's got, uh, he's got three in his, and then I'm not sure how many Jared has in his. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if, when I compete, I, I heard you guys talking like wild. Like you said, what'd you say? There was like 40 people in one of your brackets I had, one I time? had 40, 42 at a, at a Yaga. Like, I'm sorry, at a Grapple a Yaga. A Yaga. <laughs> Yaga. <laughs> Yaga. Yeah, but, but like, it's a when, jogging competition. <laughs> like I know guys are like lately, like, you know, talking to Danny, talking to Remy, talking to Luigi, like they and Bosco. Like they love like the idea, like the super fight where you just prepare for the one opponent. Yeah. And like they like that, like, because it takes a lot out of you. But like, I don't know when I compete finally, because I've been waiting so long. Yep. I want, I want it to be, it doesn't have to be 40 people. But I would like at least like to get like a few matches in. Right, right. And I think your your angle of it too was pretty dope that like you're going through these guys. It's not like you're just going and winning one fight. It's like you made it to the finals, you got first, you got second, and you fought a certain amount of guys at your bracket. It's like so out of this group of guys, like you were the top dog or you were number three or whatever. Yeah, it's not yeah. like you yeah. had like two people, you gotta 
you come in second, you get a you silver get, medal. You get a, you're th- like, you get a third place medal. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's completely different. That I think it, that sucks for anybody, and it sucks for the guy who rocks the medal and says I place first or second or third, and it's like yeah. you only fought twice, dog. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Dude, not even that. Like, no, I'm talking about two people in a bracket. You get silver, and you're like, oh, I got silver medal. Well, that's what yeah. I just said. Yeah, like I think that's whack. But I think to Terrence's um, statement, I think it is. It does hold weight. Like if you oh, have, yeah. if you, you have, have t- you got to go through five matches, Correct. like. Yeah, like at the at the grapplers cross I was telling about, I had forty two guys in my bracket. I fought like six or seven times. Yeah. to get to the finals. So sick, dude! Yeah. You feel like such a sense of accomplishment exactly. because exactly. like you like last man standing. Yes, yeah, you're right. There is something to that as well, and I mean like there is something to like the super fight. You just you focus your time on one opponent. You're not psyching yourself out when you get to the event. You know, it's like a, it's like a different prep. You well, know. they were just well. The way Danny was explaining to me, the reason he's been like preferring the uh, super fights lately is because like you get yourself so hyped up, like to to go and compete, and like it, it's like physically and like mentally like taxing. Yeah. So like for you to go through that, like like you had to do like seven matches, like you have to. Like, there's like you know the thrill of winning, and then there's like the come down in between, and then you got to get psyched up back again and do yeah. it all over again, and then you know yep. back and forth. You're like. High, low, high, low. So, like, I could see, like, wow, it's like a wild ride. But the other thing about the tournament, too, is, like, the, the amount of people in your bracket. I understand the reward angle of it, but none of it matters if you don't win the first one. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone, yeah. doesn't matter how many people are in your bracket yeah, if you, you don't win. You, you, gotta gotta you, gotta, you have to, like, every match is the finals. Yeah, yeah true. You know what I'm it's yeah. playoffs. Yeah, D Rock and I were talking about this. I was actually having a conversation with Danny. I'm reading this book called The Predator Mindset. And it talks a lot about like athletes and their mindset. You have the prey, you have the predator. And I think the reason why, like in that specific tournament, I made it over to the finals. I didn't win in the finals. I actually tore my my ACL. But um I think the reason why I got there was because I didn't put that extra pressure on myself. I didn't sit there and go, Man, there's forty two guys in my bracket. I gotta fight seven times. Oh my god, these guys are tough. Like I just went out there and each match was its own match. You know what I'm saying? I didn't look into the future and say, okay, I got four more. I got two more. I didn't do that. I just went in there and, all right, I'm up. Boom. I went out there. I performed. I came back. I went out there. performed. I came back. And that was it. I just took each match at its own. I didn't put any extra pressure. I didn't look at the future and say, I really want to win first here. And I think that mentality throughout all of my ath- like athletic sports and shit, I think that's what carried me. It's I used like- to get super nervous for the first one. Yeah. And then when I won that, the rest were easy. Yeah, because you get that initial like. Yeah. You get the grab. You get like that contact. Yeah. You're like, all you're right. Like, yeah. All right. This isn't. This isn't as bad as I yeah. thought it was going to be. And then the rest are like, now I'm having fun. But I think people do psych themselves out. I think people start looking at the big picture instead of just taking one oh, match yeah. at a time. And I think that's what deters people from doing these big, big men tournaments, these big bracket tournaments. Yeah, and it might, it might make you think like, okay, um, I have to do eight matches to get the finals. You might not sell out in that first match to win. Right, because you're holding something back, and you know, right. I, I got to have something left over. It's like, nah, dude, you can't save anything for the swim back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah, you gotta, true. it's so. definitely true. But I think Remy, I think Remy's gonna do great, man. Remy, he's he's good in the gym, but I think he shines in competition. Remy's man. a competitor. Yeah. I think he has he's a that, gamer. Yeah, he really he really is a gamer, dude. He goes out there and like I feel like he looks completely different in competition than he does in the gym. You know, yeah, he's got, got that extra gear, bro. He's got he like does. the fucking. He's the definitely heart. gonna be top eight today. Honestly, you know, I think, you know, I think what, what works very well for Remy, and you, me and you, Nick, have talked about this more, Remy approaches each training session. Like, when you roll with him, you feel that he kind of has, like, a plan and a sequence. Yeah. And he, that benefits him very, very well inside of competition. He kind of goes in with a game plan, and he executes it very well. He's not just, like, out there just doing yeah. whatever. Well, he's, he's got, like, a very specific... He, wants, he even has a game plan for each competition, like... He was saying how he goes up to a competition training a certain way, like trying to use more technique for this one or less, like yeah. more strength or whatever. And like I he, also and I also think that like what D Rock's saying too is that like in the actual match everything has intention. Yeah. He's not just throwing something out there and seeing if it works. He's not going out there waiting to respond or react. Like he's going out there and he is doing his sequences. He's doing his little system that he runs with. You yeah, know? like if this doesn't work, I'm gonna flow to the next thing. And yes. the more he competes, the more he learns. Yeah, that what he just, did yeah. wrong or what he did yeah. right, and that and that, and he learned, he and that style just gets sharper yeah. and sharper and sharper. And I I know you came up a little short uh, in that tournament because you said you tore your ACL, but like as someone who competed a lot, did you feel like a greater sense of accomplishment because you mowed through like seven opponents? I know you didn't get the finish that you wanted, but the f- I feel like all right, if you win a bracket with like five guys, 
like I feel like it would feel better to beat like six, seven opponents and then, you know, come up a little short. Yeah, I mean... The, I know you want to win at the end of the day, but like you fucking went to war like yeah. seven times. Yeah, no, that was definitely a tournament I was super proud of. I mean, it was a grapplers quest, so like... The tournaments when I competed were that not, was big back then. Though. Yeah, the yeah, grapplers quest. Like, winning a grapplers quest was a yeah, it was a big deal. Um, but like they, the technique I would say, like the level is not where it is today. But for me personally, yeah, that was like that felt great. That felt great to go in there and like make it to the finals and get so many different looks with opponents that you've never seen before. Yes. They never seen you before. Yeah, yeah, and there was a lot of wrestlers. So you had a lot of tough guys. Grapplers quest was like a lot of wrestlers. You know. But um, yeah, that that one definitely weighed more than others. You know, it definitely felt better to go in and, and make it to the end in a big bracket than going in and having like four or five guys. You yeah, know? like it sucked. Like what happened? Like when uh, Connor competed uh, a little while ago. Like it yeah. was just him and one other guy. So he beat the guy, and they were they were battling for a while there. I think the first match was like five six minutes. Yep, and then. They got a little couple minute break, and then he had to go back up against the kid that he just went against and I just saw like all yeah, experience. So that's like, stupid. That's, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks for a lot of reasons. It sucks because it feels like a waste of money. Yeah, you know. You pay, yeah, you paid like what a hundred bucks to go against the same guy twice. Yeah, like, we could have just came down to my gym, dude. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that sucks. And then it also sucks too. It's like you know, you want different looks. You go into a tournament to compete. You know, like you don't want to roll with the same guy. Like Eric Hot has like the same stories. You know, like he's gone and like there was like one of the guy in his bracket, and it's just like oh, I gotta go against him twice. It's kind of like Eric has gone against it's like gone to different tournaments and been against the same guy. Like yeah. they got the, the singlet guy. Same yeah, one guy. The singlet guy. He's dude. he's went up it was like just the two of them in that bracket. Like yep. two or three different tournaments. Yeah. I'm excited though. I'm excited. I think uh, you're gonna stream it today, right? In the jits and tits. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to log in on Bree's phone because my camera's like a little fucked up and yeah. I'm gonna stream it and then I don't know. Maybe I'll just put it on mine. It might be a little foggy, but you'll get the Are they you know, letting the spectators in it? Yeah, but I'm Coach Terry. Coach Terry today. But yeah. it's so weird though. I said this like Sogi. I give them a lot of credit because they're doing a great job, right? And, like, the tournament's getting bigger. I think that they need to find a different location, and they're probably saving money doing it in-house. But, like, I think a big it's reason... It's profit. Yeah, and I think a big reason why they're not getting a lot of people signing up this one is because of the space. It's it, just, it deters... There's, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, you're watching it from, like, the windows outside. Like, you're literally shoulder to shoulder on people. Is it bigger than the last gym they had or no? I never went to the last gym. But, I haven't been to the last year. So they're going to stream the absolute and the finals. It's like, dude, just stream the whole thing. Yeah, why not? And charge five dollars a stream. Charge ten dollars a stream. You'll make money. You'll have more people logging in. You know. And what does it cost you to stream it? Probably nothing. Nothing. You know. You could just go live on Instagram or yeah, Facebook or exactly. any, YouTube or yeah. whatever. Yep, for sure. I mean, Long Island Jiu Jitsu Network did it. Yeah, you know they, that was they, awesome. They had a YouTube channel and they fucking they did it right on their YouTube channel. That and was we were really able cool. to watch it right here. It was yeah. dope, you know. So do the same thing, you know, and like it'll be better. You know, you'll probably get more people um, watching than not going. You know, it's a big deterrent going there and you're like shoulder to shoulder with people, man. Nobody wants to spectate. Yeah, it's stuff like you that. can't see. But what I have noticed in like the handful of competitions that I've been to, people are really good with like letting you get to the front. Like if it's your boy, like yeah. if you're if you're coaching or you're spectating, like they'll like they'll clear the way. Like they're very respectful in that sense. Yeah, well, yeah the experience I've had. It's the, you know, it's the culture where it's the, there's people are not gonna be like, oh no, fuck you. you yeah, like I was front. here for I was yeah. here first like a concert where you gotta like throw bows to yeah. like get to the Yeah, front. I think it was the Long Island Jiu Jitsu uh I'm sorry, the Pride that we went to um in St. James when we yeah. before it. We were able to be oh my my boy's up and like oh you know down like a guy bunch of guys move for us and we were able to get right up and coach and watch and, and record. So. Yeah he killed that tournament. He did dude he that was did. awesome and then uh tap out cancer he did like really well in yeah too. and same for Naga AC yeah yeah Remy's, Remy's I missed on, that one <laughs> Remy's on a streak man he's on a streak and like I said I'm excited for him today he'll have a bracket of a bunch of guys to go through you I, know I think he went like. Uh, Ten and one, or was it ten? And one? He said he was trying to beat it, but yeah, he had a, he had a good year last year. Yeah, he did. He had like three tournaments, and he had like eleven matches, and he fucking wound up doing ten and one. That's a good record, that's dude. It's a great yeah, record. That's, yeah. that's something to be proud of. You know, that For one sure. kid that he had was uh, was tough. That tap out cancer one, that sixteen yeah. year old kid. Yeah, yeah, he was he was he was a tough kid. He was good. And Luisi today too, man. I'm excited to see Luisi go. Yeah, he looked so sharp at uh, the Jiu Jitsu Network. Yeah, he did, man. Luisi's one of those kids. He's like quiet. He comes and hangs out once in a while. It's like you could barely hear him talk. You know what I'm saying? Very, like, very soft spoken, quiet. Yeah. Like he's on that female frequency when he talks. He might be. He <laughs> might be, dude. No, he, he doesn't be. have a high pitched voice or anything. He's no. just oh, soft spoken. No, he's, no, he's just on the female frequency. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, he looked amazing, though, at the Long Island Jiu-Jitsu Network. So I'm excited to see him today. You know, but he only has, what, three guys? Four guys? Yeah, I think he's got three total in his bracket. Yeah. So what happened, Terrence? I thought you were supposed to do Soki. Uh, I don't know. Just wasn't feeling it, dude. I don't know. Wasn't feeling it. I got, I'm, so I'm locked in for Pride. Okay. I, he's, I'm he's already committed. signed up. Like, I, I signed up for that Foley Sogi. I was, like, flirting with the idea of it. I don't know why I ended up not doing it. I don't know. Just, like... It didn't tickle your fancy, I have pr- I have pride on my mind. I was looking at the brackets, and then, I don't know, Remy, like, at first, he was like, why would you do that tournament? Like, it's a white and blue. Like, you're an idiot. Why would you do that? And then Danny was like, you you go against higher belts, like, every night at class. Like, pride is white and matter. blue? No, 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 no. The, oh, so, so he is. Okay, so yeah. is. So Remy's like, why would you do that? And then... Um, I don't know like he fucking he was like why would you do it and then the other day he's like yeah do it like why wouldn't you do it and I'm like dude you fucking told me that I shouldn't do it it depends on how high Remy was yeah exactly (laughs) I was high when I said that (laughs) I mean you should be high when he said both yeah I kind of agree with Rem though like if it's gonna be your first tournament like why why put yourself at a disadvantage I feel like white and blue is like such a vast difference in technique yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. being like a one stripe white belt compared to a four stripe blue belt it's a big difference in technique so it's like for your first tournament i wouldn't really say like i was kind of like hey you do what you want like i didn't really weigh in but i kind of feel like your first tournament why not give yourself every opportunity to win go against guys that are at the same level as you you Did know even blue belt like the difference between a guy who just got his blue belt and someone who's been a blue belt for like four or five years yeah you know there's a huge di- like that's probably that's the belt that probably is the biggest gap yeah or at oh, least yeah. those two right white to blue not even know? no not even white to blue like just i'm saying blue, blue belt in general like yeah. a blue beginner blue belt. belt to like an advanced blue belt could be vastly yeah, different there's a huge yeah. variance well, yeah there. look at cole <laughs> yeah exactly he was in he was Abate. in ex- yeah he was yeah. A, he was an experienced blue belt and he fucking won 80 cc trials yeah it's crazy yeah. there's there's such a variance it's ridiculous that would bother me too if like say i was a, a higher end blue belt and i'm like my first match is against some like kid who's six months in a white belt like that would bother me yeah i don't want that yeah and i, I get, want i want real competition yeah and i get why sogi does it man they're trying to like you know make, make their brackets bigger right, exactly. because if they, this was broken up like Luis's only got like I don't know if these kids are white or blue that he's going up against but he's only got three men in his thing so if you chop it up between white and blue then what he maybe has one guy in right his well, also I'll give them credit too because like maybe they're experimenting you know maybe they're just trying this out to see how it goes and if yeah. it doesn't if it doesn't land then like okay whatever this is, this like, is better give it a shot this this is what was that one tournament where time. black and brown were the same bracket it's just that expert quest, I feel like that's not that uncommon yeah that's not uncommon yeah, Naga does that. They do like no. They, gi, it's like expert. A, yeah, they just do expert. Yeah. yeah. So no, there be, was one where it was like black and brown belt where, um, its own. They were both the same I don't bracket. Know. I, don't I don't remember know. ever hearing that. I don't know. I just know like Naga does expert, which is like anywhere like purple, from purple, purple to black, which yeah. is yeah, which is do. bananas too. But I think that's a little bit more in the realm of like you could have a really nasty purple belt, you know what I'm saying? And then you could have like a really nasty black belt. But I feel like when you get to purple belt, like you're already starting to have a game or at least you should, you should have a game. You should have solid sequences or systems that like you're nailing, you know, I get to side control. I'm in Della Hiva. I'm in butterfly guard. Like you have go-to moves that are solid and they work. Damn, you I don't know? even have that now. Damn, baby. But um, <laughs> that's what I feel. I feel like that. I feel like at, at that level, you start to really start honing in on you, your body type and what works for you. You know what I mean? And then from there, it's like, okay, like this is what I look for in this position. This is what I look for in this position. When they do this, I do that. When they do that, I do this. And then by purple belt, it's more a refinement of your skills than it is like an acquisition. Yeah. But basically when you get to like purple, mid purple, you've, you've, basically already acquired most of the skills that are that are necessary you're just refining them now yeah and tailoring them to you and what yeah, yeah. and then to sprinkle in a little extra seasoning on top you know i'll, I'll use a that extra too. dip on that chip a little extra dip on the chip <laughs> you know so i mean it's crazy the there's only five belts yeah you know what i mean so by by that structure there leaves a lot of room for variance inside of belts you know what i mean like it's it's always going to be that way um but white and blue is just I th- I think that from from white to blue and then the levels of blue to like high blue is a that's pro- those are probably the largest variances in skills. Yeah, I agree. You know. Yep, hundred percent. Because I mean, even at Nog is like if you are um, doing nogi, the novice is zero to six months with no wrestling. 
and then intermediate or beginner i'm sorry is six months to whatever yeah it's me yeah and you're allowed to be you're allowed to be a wrestler so like you know like you look at that too you're you get a blue belt who's third four stripes and you're going against somebody at sogi who's a you're like no stripe white belt but this blue belt now has these years in jits and he was a wrestler yeah you know now you're kind of like really putting yourself up against yeah. you know a deficit and it's like why well, do that for your first tournament that's how i feel it's not right it's not wrong it's just my opinion but that's why i wasn't like yeah yeah do sogi like i wasn't pushing you for it because i was just like yo it's your first tournament go out there give yourself the best opportunity to yeah, win you're better off doing a pride for your first one yeah, yeah yeah go out there like you want like at the end of the day it's just for experience but you still want to be able to do well it's, it was yeah, tempting you're, doing you're, still, you're still going both. out to win what do you say? Are you doing gear or no gear? I'm doing both. That was actually both. a question that I had for you guys because some people say that they wish they could just do one or the other, but I just was trying to get as many looks as possible. 100%. No, especially, yeah, for your first tournament, you, do both. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. I know it's a long day and everything, but like... It's worth it. I think it'll be worth it. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm excited. Yeah, you should be. It's going to be a great time. I want to ask you a question. Sure. Uh, a year and a half ago, did you ever think that you'd be having this conversation where now you're like prepping for your first jiu-jitsu tournament let alone even probably doing jiu-jitsu right when i yeah that's a i mean no way i don't think that like i ever thought that i'd be competing i thought maybe i'd try it out i wasn't sure if i was gonna like it or not but like you guys like you know gave me the push in the right direction to get going but it's pretty crazy and then now once i started and i got into it like a couple months in i'm like Oh, I gotta fucking compete because I just like go off of like what people are doing. Like you know, you guys got me into it. You guys train like fucking every day, so I'm like, that's what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm like I'm like yo, the guys, the guys that are performing the best are the guys that are training the most. So I'm like, and I feel like it's already paid for. Like I, you know, you pay your membership, and then like you you get like wh it's what you make of it. Like you can go there. You're paying the same price whether you go there once every three months or if you go there every fucking day. So like if they're like giving the information out, like why not go there and learn? Yep, yeah. it's a good. It's a good yeah, I think if you would have asked me that question, like a month before I started jujitsu or even knew what jujitsu was, you'd be like, "Yo, did you, whatever, thirteen years ago, did you ever think you'd be doing jujitsu or like right here right now?" I wouldn't. I would have said no way. Yeah. How like, did you? How did you get your start? Like who? Wh how did you find out about jujitsu, Luigi? I was in the plumbing apprenticeship program and my buddy Richie we had to do a we had to do like a presentation of something that's not plumbing like something that we liked it was kind of like to, like a thing to get to know each other uh, we had to do a presentation of something not plumbing that you're into and this kid Rich showed jujitsu and he showed like a couple moves in front of the class and I was like ah oh, that looks pretty cool I'm like I don't know if it's gonna work or not whatever so I'm, I'm friends with him. I'm like, yo, I kind of want to learn that. Like, he goes, yeah, come to my house. We're on his front lawn. And at the time, I was like 200 pounds. I wasn't fat yet, so I was still in good shape. He's like a buck 25 soaking wet. And he wrapped me up into a pretzel, and I couldn't move. And I was like, holy fuck, I got to learn. The, one of the dark pretzels or like the regular pretzels? The, actually, one of the ones in the cup that like they're all squished together. Nice. All right, cool. It was one of those. Um and I was like, fuck, I got to learn everything this kid knows. Yeah, because so he's we like, started like out. I started out on his front lawn, right? For like the first two or three days, we're on his front lawn. His lawn's getting fucking just the grass is destroyed. That's his awesome. mother comes out. I was like, you guys got to stop. Like, no more fucking wrestling on the front lawn. <laughs> so we went out We went out to like Costco or BJ's, bought the puzzle mats. So it was like two by two puzzle mats. We yeah. bought like 10 packs of them. We stacked it to like an inch thick in his basement and did like a 10 by 10 mat. And I learned, I was learning there for like six months and then i ended up going to a school that's great that's a great story that's awesome that's a funny way to start but that yeah that's how i started that's awesome it's and crazy too even, does that guy even does that guy train anymore he doesn't train anymore but his, how crazy is that right? that's crazy like his nephew does so like while we were in his basement this kid uh nicky munch was about five six years old watching us do that and then just last thursday i was rolling with nicky at uh that monster that's great that's cool man that's so cool that's a great story it's crazy to think about man because i can still i think actually this week is 15 years for me wow. like this week and i still remember like that feeling of being a white belt when i first started i remember still i could still feel how it like man i'm never gonna 
like am i ever going to be good at this am i ever going to figure this out like what i remember thinking like a purple belt at that time was like yeah insane yeah Yeah, dude. there was not a lot of purple belts when we started you know like i remember thinking like man purple belt like am i ever going to get to that i remember thinking like if i can get my purple belt i can get my black belt yeah you know and when i when the day i got my purple belt i was like dude i'm going to be a black belt one day yep the reason i went to an actual school is because we were so we're training this kid's basement for like six months and schmitty went started training at like an actual school for a month came back and i used to like kind of destroy schmitty like even though i was kind of brand new he had no you know he has no idea what he's doing but he came back after a month of like going to a school and actually learning the right shit and i couldn't do a fucking thing to him i was like fuck now i, I know like i gotta yeah. jump it up a little bit. yeah we'll learn this that's cool it's, yeah, it's it's great it's yeah like the i i set out doing jiu-jitsu really to like learn how to fight so if you would have asked me like if i thought i was going to be competing and stuff like that yes but i didn't think this would be happening like if it wasn't for jiu-jitsu we wouldn't be doing this right now you know i wouldn't have the friends i have i wouldn't have had the opportunities i've had it's like i never ever imagined any of that i never realized the tremendous impact it would have on like every single aspect of my life. I never once even considered that or even stopped to consider it as it was like happening until yeah. like a certain point in time where I was like, and I didn't even realize it was like somebody else said it to me where I like realized like, Oh my God, like my entire life is kind of like, just even think of all the girls you've been with just because of jujitsu, like, like jujitsu got you to the beach. That got you <laughs> yeah. All, no, like, it's true. Honey, like, all the honey did. How many it's times true. you gotten laid? Cause you're like, yo, I like your ears. Yeah, you know? it's a hundred percent, hundred percent true. Like, yeah, I'd never, I would have never even considered. It. I know, like we we talk about this kind of stuff often, but I mean, it's it's really pretty crazy how it. I don't want to say infested every area of my life, but it really did. It like it, 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 it molded, it molded. Yeah, it. it's taken over, and I never ever thought that that would be the case because I don't think I've ever, outside of basketball, when I was a kid, like ever had anything like that, and even basketball didn't compare to the impact this has had yeah. um and now looking back at it, i'm like who knows what like the next 10 years would be like who knows where we'll all be in the next 10 years like this in 10 years this podcast could be fucking you know huge. gigantic huge and it's we're like we're gonna be getting canceled like joe rogan <laughs> <laughs> dude if we're you're gonna, be, on, we're gonna have 11 million views and fucking that's it you it, if you can be canceled, you've had a level of success then. You that's know? what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, no one's canceling us right now. No, no. Like, no one's <laughs> 10 years from now, we got 11 million viewers every <laughs> fucking week. We ain't there yet. But dude, I just think like, and I, I think back to how cool it is that now, Terrence, like you're training, you're competing, you fucking love it. It's like, all of that stuff is, is, like, it's just fucking amazing. Like, I, I was, I think I was saying the other day when we were doing the Six Borough, we had, two people that started jiu-jitsu because of that podcast like who knows how many other people out there everybody here has like influenced and and maybe pushed in that path whether knowingly or unknowingly yeah you know what i mean it's fucking amazing it is really cool i don't think terrence is gonna you know influence anybody because he sucks <laughs> but <laughs> just kidding terrence, he, I love he's you. the people's white belt he might you know yeah he's the people's you white never belt. know i might fucking sh- surprise some people on march 6th oh yeah definitely you're gonna, Dude, have, a, you're gonna have a good time honestly you've surprised me this whole time i think I <laughs> last year and a half. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm not saying that negatively. I don't mean that in a negative way. I think it's just been. I think it's been so. Uh, from from when it first started, you seemed very on the fence about it. Where I thought maybe you were going to try it and dabble, but like you fucking went balls deep into it, and like you're obsessed, and it's awesome. And I think, I think seeing seeing the transformation in you over the course of the last year has been fucking awesome. Thank you. So yeah, you even got a nicer gi than all of us here combined. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I'm not like big to like splurge on shit or anything like that, but like it was really cool and like a lot of my gis are getting ratty and like I didn't know that you weren't supposed to like, I didn't know you had to wash them cold. I knew you were supposed to hang dry them, but like a lot of them shrunk and shit. So I needed something to compete in that would be like legal because most of the ones I train with are like way too shrunk. Yeah. But, but like plus, I train a lot, so I don't want to like hang dry my shit yeah. and have to wait like two days for it to dry. And plus you got a good wife, dude. So she looked out for you on that one. Yeah. It's my girl. That's your girl. But I guess on that note, boys, let's uh, let's wrap this up. It was a long one, but uh, hopefully. No question of the day. No. Yeah, what are we at? Hopefully, we're at two thirty. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully the listeners, break. hopefully the listeners enjoyed this one today. Uh, big did. shout out to Island Kava. 
always holding it down for us here, man. Um, Ryan, artist, you guys go check him out on Instagram. Uh, big shout out to Asar over at Relax and Revive. You guys are looking to recover. He's a great place to go. He's a cool dude, man. Go check him out. Yo, also, whoever that girl was that shouted us out there. Yeah, big shout outs to you. <laughs> let, it, let us know who you were. <laughs> also, um, if there's anybody listening that's looking f- to rent out space that's yes. uh, like a massage or physical therapy or things like that. Go, um, go check him out. Yeah, hit up Asar at Relax and Revive. He's looking to uh, rent out some space. So if anybody's listening and is in need. Uh, definitely hit him up. Yeah, big shout out to Lalo. If you guys are looking for a little uh, relax in a can, a little calm in a can, go check them out. They got great flavors. It's a good experience uh, drinking one of those Lalos. Big shout out to Total Motion 360. If you guys are looking for an innovative way to work out or just changing up your workout routine, go uh, go order a bar. Um, that's it, fellas. And shout out to the boys competing today. From, yes. From Breathe. We got uh, Brandon Remy, our podcast own, uh, Joe Luisi, and Jared. Yeah. So go check them out, too. So he's going down and look out for uh, February 19th, Flex Fight Series over here in Patch Hall at Stereo Garden. We'll be there. We'll have some merch, some hats, some shirts, stickers. Like, yeah, two, we're just what, come say what's up, me? man. It would be cool to to interact with anybody that's listening, man. It's it, it's uh, It'd be cool to see, see people... Um, you know, get that interaction with everybody. So if you if you guys are there and you see us there, definitely say what's up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. that was awesome. The last fights, yeah, having people come up to us it and recognize us and shit. That was that was awesome. All right, yo, thanks for listening. Peace. Peace. Ta ta.